All right, guys, hope you're all doing well. A little jump scare here to get the stream started. We are going to be doing a surprise single faction tournament, and I am going to be playing the Chorfs, which are one of the worst factions in the game, but um, should be fun. <laughs> Let's see how it goes. If I can go 50% today, get two and two, I'm going to be very, very happy. And hey, maybe we'll win the tournament. That'd be crazy. All right. So let's go ahead and switch on over to the game here. Perfect. And the tournament's going to be starting right now. Let me just deal with the last check-ins here and we'll get our first match. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're all doing well. Appreciate all of you. All right. Let's go time, baby. Where are we at? Yes. And let's go ahead and generate the brackets. Bracket is being generated. And let's get it going. Doing a workout, huh, Martin? What are you doing, man? What kind of... You just pumping some iron, doing some beach muscles? Hitting up some bicep curls and uh, some bench press, the old ways. Yes, that is how you do it. Yeah, no, Chaos Dwarfs just had a, they just, uh, they have a lot of like over-costed, um, over stuff essentially, yeah. All right, so just need to do a little bit of admining here. And our first round matchup is going to be versus House Cat. Of <laughs> oh, we're going to just get absolutely be bully beat down here. <laughs> oh, God. We're playing like one of the worst factions against one of the top players in the world. It's just the, it's, it's how it's meant to be. I would imagine he's playing something good too, because he probably uh, is going for the kill here. All right. So let's do this. Um, yes. And let's get that going. Okay. Might as well, you know, the good part about this is House Cat is very likely to, um, very likely to win all of his games after this. So we will have a very good, um, a very good tiebreaker. Oh, one sec here. One sec. So let me go ahead and get the lobby code. There we go. Outstanding. All right. You're going to be playing some magic in 20. Sounds like fun, man. Yeah, no, I'm, I just built a new Eldrazi commander deck. Very excited to kind of whip that out as well. All right. So what is the map that we're going to be on here for our first game? And it looks like everybody is Coming to party. Yep, matchups are good. Switch his score to one. We had one buy round, unfortunately, our Bretonian player. And the first map is going to be the road to Talapime. All right. So I suspect he's playing a good faction because he's a pretty high level tournament player. Yep, playing Warriors of Chaos. So road to Talapime. I have no idea how this matchup is played. So we are going to be um, learning the hard way. Yes, yes. If we can win it too, that'd be pretty sweet, but I don't suspect that's going to be the case. <laughs> All right, let's get it. Losing to the winner, very tactical. Ninja, thank you for the 499. Good luck in the tournament today, and thank you for all the content and the good stuff from Washington State. Thank you, man. We were up there recently, actually. The wife and I were up in Washington uh, a while back. Yeah, it would have been in June. We went to Mount Rainier, which was really cool. I enjoyed the hell out of that. That was, that was super fun. So I wonder what Lord he's going to be using. Part of me wants to like innovate and try something different, well, but what could we possibly do? Aspiring champions are a little bit problematic in this matchup. Um, obviously, our infantry sucks really bad. It's it's pretty terrible. But um, you know, maybe maybe we got to whip some out. We'll see. Nothing but the trains. Yeah, the train spam can definitely be very very nasty. It can be very good. Um, all right, so we probably want to bring. I really want to bring Draz Hoeth, but he just kind of sucks, you know. That's that's the problem with him. He's just he's just so janky, you know. Yeah, he's not very good. Thomas the Pain Engine, yeah. I think I think the Pain Engines are certainly viable. Whip a couple of those out against the champions of the Dark Gods, and you can uh, you can do well for yourself. All right, let's slap that down there. I think having one of those is going to be necessary. Do we want a Baelator's character is the question. I mean, Baelator's character is good at killing, like, sigvald S character. Severed Claw is a little bit of a problem for them, though. Um, could go for, like, a cheaper foot-based character and have, like, the Infernal Castellans. Lots of neat stuff. Yeah, the Elite Chowie uh, are pretty badass, for sure. I, I don't know how well they would hold up against Chaos Elite Forces. Um, I mean, Chaos, yeah. I don't know. We got, we got some fun ideas. We're going to have some fun here and experiment, so... Let us see what we can get done. All right, so for the Lord choice, let's go ahead. Yeah, Archeon, Archeon's a bit of a bully, but our, if he's on horseback, he just you know, we have ways of dealing with him for sure. Let's call you out of the back here. And then we can have a couple of you guys, and you guys, and you guys. I actually kind of like that. I think that's kind of a cute little uh, combo right there. I'm doing a different play style. I want to experiment today and see what we can maybe figure out and what kind of schemes we can get up to, right? 
Welcome to the stream. Foghorn with three chains. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Foghorn with three trains seems pretty good. But that's like very predictable too. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll try that. Maybe we will try it indeed. All right, so for the Lord. Drazoth, so cool. I wish he was better. Like I wish some of those characters were just more viable, you know? It's a shame because they're so, inc so incredibly rad. Yeah. Yeah, just in time, man. Just in time for the old stream here. Yeah, it's going to be a good time. We're going to let it roll. All right, so against Warriors of Chaos, what kind of magic do you want? I mean, Buna is always... Now, Buna isn't that good against them, I don't think. Um, and then what do we want for casting-wise? Foghorn is always very good. Yeah, he's just as disruptive and cheap and has, like, good magic, right? Like, Flamestorms can be effective. The Hellhammer isn't bad either. Plus, he's a respect respectable fighter, too, which is really nice. Yeah, Stone Mantle is not a bad one for him if we decide to go that route. Pwn thinks he's going to go 6-0. and Yeah, Pwn is playing Vampire Count, so we, we were joking before the stream. We're like, it's time for both of us to just suffer today. Let's just play the janky factions and just embrace the pain. All right, so that looks good. And um, Burning Wrath does a little bit of damage, not too much. Cascading Fire Cloak and Flaming Sword of Ruin are kind of cute. But overall, probably just spamming that is going to be good. And uh, we can bring this too. Yeah, that looks all right. Cool. So then in reserves, we'll want one of you and one of you. Because I think that's always kind of a necessity. Let's see if we can slap down one of these guys in the back. I'm trying to think of like what sort of tricks and traps could befall that unit. Hopefully nothing too bad. Yeah, so the build is looking okay so far. I'm not unhappy with it. Dealing with the uh, Severed Claw is always a bit of a pain. Granted, you can always just rotate around and play the side objectives and kind of ignore them a little bit. So, yeah, something to consider. All right, so this is the main core. Um, we could bring out another one of these guys. Although, man, why are the... the the skirmish cavalry is so expensive for the for these guys. I'm like looking at them. I'm like, man, it's 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 a hard it's a hard price point to justify for sure. Blasting charges are pretty cool. The old uh, infernal iron swarm. I feel like they're a little bit underrated. Like they got some they got some tricks that they could uh, they could employ. The elite chawi troopers. All right. So how's the front line look? Looking okay. And. Um, yeah, Magma Cannons probably just straight up are not good now. I would guess that they don't do the trick anymore. Yeah, all right. Do you want to have a power fantasy about the days of old and whip out a Magma Cannon? Maybe. Maybe we will. All right, good luck. Have fun to my opponent. Let's see how this goes. Um, no idea. We're going to try some tricks and some schemes, and it's just a bit of an experimental build. It's it's not meta at all. This This is a very off-meta build, and I'm hoping that we can have some success with that. But again, against a player like Housecat, probably only meta is going to work. Um, he's he's top tier. So, Bull Centaur Meme Army, it wouldn't do very good. You'd probably just get blocked up by Severed Claw and things like that. Any plans for a Warhammer 3 PvP campaign? Uh, Ethan, probably not in the immediate future, just because um, PvP campaigns are just... One second. They're just so laggy and, and haggard. Like, CA's... Like, like structure of the game, like in terms of like, it's just so clunky for multiplayer. Like barely, we can get away with it with just two people, you know, peer to peer works okay here, but um, in campaign, it's like pretty miserable. I don't know, maybe, maybe when a new DLC or whatever comes out, maybe. Playing Torch right now in campaign, except, yeah, they're, they're good in campaign for sure. I mean, but to be fair, almost everybody can be good in campaign. Like, you could probably find a way to, like, beat, like, the Empire campaign on the hardest difficulty in the game just using, like, Tier 1 units if, if you just, like, abuse other things, right? Like, it's the campaign is, is pretty, uh, it's pretty tricksy. All right, so we went with a, um, a very balanced Chowie build, which we'll probably come to regret, but we're going to try it anyways. So we got the Goblin Laborers in the front with a couple of Chowie Warriors. One and one. All right, we got Foghorn Leghorn. We got three of these bad boys, or two of these. And the idea is they just go shoot Marauders with great weapons, which inevitably will come in. We got you guys in the trees. And uh, we do also have a Death Reek in the tree as well, which will pop out in a moment. And it can uh, it can come out and party. We have one great weapon guy. Um, thinking about playing the side point, but Warriors of Chaos are definitely better at that. Um, 
We could just plant you in the trees and maybe move them up and see if we have any options there. All right, so let's grab you and hide you in the trees also. And cool. So yeah, it's a very balanced build. And for the Collins, you can see we do have a uh, blunderbusses, bull, bull center renders, um, a one train as well. I wanted to have the ROR train because I feel like it's super, super good. So um, yeah, we're gonna like pop you up like so. Although those trees are kind of a little bit, a little bit scary. So we're gonna take you off fire at will for for starters here. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Get my game sound up here. So my opponent's got a simil similarly sized army, which is pretty wide for chaos. Probably Marauder heavy, I would imagine. Yeah, the flame cannon is a bit janky. All right, so what do we got? A Nurgle Sorcerer? Oh, just with Fleshy Abundance. Okay, interesting. All right, so let's take our Skirmishers up here, and then you guys can go into the trees there. And the Death Streak Rocket Launcher is going to be ready to go. Astrogoth's going to run up and do his thing. Yeah, it's Trolls and the Exalt... Oh, yeah, shit. I didn't even think about how we're going to deal with those Exalted Heroes of Nurgle. Um, that's going to be scary. So probably just Bull Central Renders would be my guess. Yeah, we're just going to whip those guys out and... Take you over there, go do a little bit of poke, and we can relocate over this way, which I think is gonna be better. And let's pull the Death Streak over that way and play these like, cause his whole army's there with like tree cover. So I don't wanna mess with that. So he's just going with the Exalted Hero um, action, which is very good. All right, let's save ammo here. What do we got? Marauders with great weapons. So we're gonna move up and you guys can position like so. And yeah, we should be able to start ripping some shots. And this guy will be in range to shoot soon. So let's get his anti-large shot and start taking down some armored chaos trolls if we can. And yeah, not bad. Little little skirmish damage. Good to warm the old soul here. Getting those uh, great opens a little bit beat up. And yeah, we just kind of keep working on them. All right, so you guys can park here. We're gonna play the side objective here. Dealing with those characters is gonna be the biggest the biggest uh, issue for sure. That's that's like super hard. So. We need to make sure we are good to go there. All right, let's call in the great weapons to deal with the Nurgle characters and see if it can work out. Do a little bit of shooting here. You guys come here, and then you guys position like so. Death Rock Rocket Launcher, almost in range. Um, we could take like a pot shot at these guys, just like a big AOE one, and see if we can get lucky. Astrogoth's going to come over here, and yeah, we're getting some respectable damage in there. Not bad at all. All right, so the Nurgle characters are, like I said, going to be the biggest problem. Um, they are going to be a pain in the butt. We do have Severed Claw popping out of the bushes, and uh, we're getting respectable skirmish damage here. Let's pull you guys back, and did we actually hit? Hey, look at that. We actually hit something. All right, so let's scoot and shoot. We want to make sure our ammo is adequate here. And now our Torf Warriors, they should win that fight. And let's pull in Astrogoth to help out. We have you guys to shoot these trolls, so let's park them back here. And the bull centaur renders stand at the ready. All right, let's move you guys this way. And cool, so we can move up on the objective, at least like contest it a little bit, which would be nice. You guys can go there. You two warriors can go here, and you two warriors can go right here. All right. So he's coming around the back with, to go after my uh, death streak, which is very cute. But we're going to be ready for that. We're going to have the bull centaurs back there, as well as these guys. So feeling pretty good about that situation. As far as the initial objective fighting goes, let's pull you guys back here. Let the Chorf Warriors pile in and fight. We have the Hero Squad looking to party. And let's go ahead and get the single target mode and start shooting at the Armored Chaos Trolls. And you guys shoot at the Chaos Trolls too. All right, Foghorn needs to come back here. The Nurgle Champions are an absolute pain. And we're going to get the Blunderbusses, move them up and shoot here. And you can see how we're kind of screening them out a little bit with our guns and our characters and stuff. So that's good. And hopefully the Trolls will be diminished on this point. We'll, we'll have to find out. Pull some of these raiders, come around the back here, look and see what we can do. And uh, yeah, the Nurgle characters have fled the scene. So these guys can probably head this way now. All right, so we want to do some flame storms if we can. So let's uh, drop it. Uh, the Marauders there. Wouldn't be a bad one. Might be able to make some good contact. Get you into the trolls, pull you guys back. And we do get the flame storm there, which isn't terrible in terms of damage. All right, it's blunderbusses. You guys go here, intercept. Foghorn, come back this way. And uh, let's go ahead and send you to go ninja this objective in the meantime, if nobody's going to kind of hold on to that one. All right, so down you go. Let's rotate and pull back. We get you guys moving in. Outstanding. Foghorn should be over here, so let's do Cascading Fire Cloak on these guys. And the blunderbusses are about ready to fire. Hopefully they'll be able to get some good damage. Back you go. Back you go. Foghorn comes in and does battle with the Aspiring Champions. All right, so let's turn around now. Or not the Aspiring Champions, but you know what they are. Those big scary boys. So this is a, often a Chaos Dwarf problem. Getting forced off objectives is, is really like, because you just don't have good infantry. Yeah, so let's pop the Hammer of Hashet. Pull you guys back this way. Do this. 
let the blunderbusses fire. And the Death Shriek is, uh, I believe, hitting the troll units over there. And it doesn't look like it's made great contact, though. All right, let's do this. Pull you guys in. Intercepts. Outstanding. These guns back, and then do a little bit of a sandwich there. Foghorn and company actually doing very well for themselves, but now we see a Mutalith Beast, which is just nasty nastiness. They're like, we don't have too many great answers outside of our shooting here. All right, so the sandwich is down on those. Um, these guys still going strong. Let's pull you guys back. Pull you guys around. And the blunderbusses need to just go and start blasting these exalted heroes. Let's move you in. Get the Death Street Rocket Launcher away. Foghorn can do another little um, vortex right here to try and punish these guys. And he's not doing badly, honestly. We can maybe start to nuke this Mutalith Beast here. And get all of you guys shooting here. Get one of you guys to go intercept these. And Foghorn is taking it to those champions pretty effectively, actually. He's not doing bad at all. Alright, so more gunfire. Not bad at all. Let's go in guard mode. Rip some big shots into the big man. And how are we doing against the characters? They're a little bit beat up, but he does have access to Nurgle healing, which is a little bit of a problem. So, alright, let's get you here. And uh, we can see what we can call in here and get you guys up to that objective there and try and get a little bit cheeky on the objective play. All right, come on. Shoot the beast. Shoot the beast here. Um, Foghorn hopefully can win his fight there. Let's get the Cascading Fire Cloak. And we do have the Mutalith Beast actually taking some damage. We're, we're scrapping okay, all things considered. It's not terrible. And we did manage to ninja an objective, so that's, that's really good. So that'll give us a small chance of staying in the game, basically. All right, so let's get you up, and you can head over there. How are we looking in the backfield? Scary, scary. All right. So those guys do get routed, but Foghorn is trying his best to beat down some of the bullies. We don't have like enough like anti anti like character to deal with a lot of these big monsters, it would seem. Yeah, I mean, we have managed to ninja a couple objectives, which is very cute, but I don't know if it's going to save us. It'll buy us a little bit of time. All right. Let's do this. You attack here. The Bull Centaur renders are just being taken apart, which is uh, to be expected. And uh, we'll just call out another Bull Centaur, I guess. The other ones. Yeah, we have a little bit of shooting. We did get the Mutalith Beast down pretty low, but he has access to healing, which is not good. So uh, anybody else we want to buff over there? I don't think so. We managed to ninja a couple of objectives, which is hilarious. So despite all that, we're we're up on the points. Not up on the points, but we are going to have points, is what I'm trying to say. Um, yep, let's get some Bull Centaurs. Even though they're dual axe variant, they'll still be good against the infantry and respectable against the characters. And the Mutalith Beast is going to get healed, most likely. And yeah, it's, it's hard. Warriors of Chaos are pretty good um, as far as factions go. And I, I don't know. Maybe we could have gone double foot character, but they would lose to the Nurgle champions for sure. All right. So we have that side point, which is cute. Very fun stuff. Let's head to the middle and see if we can do a little bit of scrapping over there. We're massively behind on value, but we're going to go see if we can get cheeky up on the points or something like that. But yeah, this just feels like it's over. Uh, let's do a Flamestorm right there. Astrogoth can run back up to the points. And uh, let's see if we can ninja some shit. Yeah, let's see if we can take some points. All right, Flamestorm there was respectable. Bull Centaur Goon Squad's going to head that way. He's got just a nasty SE core. And it's always been one of the big weaknesses of Chorps is dealing with um, single entities and stuff. It's it's they've not, foot, it's like small single entities, not big ones. Big ones you can deal with with um, Death Shrieks and stuff. But aside from that, it's very tough. All right, so we managed to scrap some objectives. We'll fight a little bit longer before tapping out. But I don't think we have too many chances um, as far as like what I would change in this build, I'm not sure. I'm not sure actually. I'm gonna have to think about it. All right, you go here, you go here, and uh, Foghorn and company are gonna move up. All right, just keep keeping them off the objective. What Collins can we get on this side? All right, you guys just hustle back here in droves. We are getting the cap. Foghorn's on his way, and now his big scary goon squad in the back is gonna be re-emerging into the fight. All right, let's summon you. Let's even get you back in the pool. We're gonna have another flame storm soon. All right, let's go ahead and charge these guys. And we are going to get that objective, which is pretty funny. Uh, anything we want to do here? Yeah, we can call it Demon's Tongue. Screw it and see what we can do here. So the Demon's Tongue can move up there. That is the uh, flamethrower train. We do squash those troops, and now he's coming back with a vengeance. Um, yeah, he's coming to party. All right, you guys surround those Armored Chaos Trolls. How are we looking here? Looks like these guys are coming in. We'll move there and do a rear charge. Might be able to break the leadership. Yeah, you would have to probably go like pure anti-large fighting, but the problem is Mutalith Beasts are like super OP, so it's like, I don't know how you would trade into that thing, because it kills all your ground-based support with the Mortis Engine, um, which is pretty nasty. All right, so we got that point. We'll fight a little bit longer, but overall I don't see what we could do. Yeah, we're just going to do the train and meme away here. Send that thing to the Shadow Realm. We got a nice Flamestorm right there, actually. And uh, yeah, let's loop this way. Come here. Move away from Severed Claw. Um, is there any sort of artillery we could call in? Not really at this point. 
We can come this way with some uh, some scary gabos. All right, let's move in. The train of doom is just cackling and running away. Let's see if we can get some flame flare action on these. All right, come on, give it to me, precious. Shoot the flamethrower! Shoot it! It's not shooting! Oh God! Let's say it doesn't want it. It doesn't want it today. All right, so let's get on those marauders. And uh, is there anything else we can call in? Not really. We don't have any good good choices. Yeah, so the Bull Centaurs were definitely not enough to deal with those Nurgle characters with healing. That's brutal. Although, yeah, the Bull Centaur renders here are not doing terribly. He's still chasing those. Um, let's fall in some Chorf Warriors to eventually come up to the point here. And we've gotten a little bit of damage against those, but yeah. This is definitely just GG. I'm not going to waste his time. Yeah, dude, I don't know what to do in that matchup. Holy shit. I feel like Chorfs don't have any tools to deal with that whatsoever. I mean, maybe double Death Reek with a character. Probably you have to go Goon Squad. Like, balanced chorps just doesn't feel good. GG, well played. All right. So, where are we at? Let's see. We're probably one of the first ones to finish. Let me tell him to report score. And he will report that. And now what we can do is we can focus on going to the drawing boards. Um, so, maybe if we were playing Warriors of Chaos, we probably have to go for, like, really cheesy meta. So, let's go with, like, a Bale Taurus character with death. Spirit Leech um, against the character spam, Chalice of Blood and Darkness, and then maybe we just go double Bail Taurus character, like something like uh, like this. You could go Astrogoth plus, yeah, like this and this. That's going to be like two big Goon Squad characters. I don't know. I don't know what to do against those. EU friendly hours. I know, man. We're having we're having a good time here. Death Reekers are definitely good. Um, if you just have one sitting in the old backfield. The ninjing of the objectives was good. Buna wouldn't be very good there. Buna wouldn't be very good at all. Uh, Counter Narrative says, I've been playing Chorps only lately. Yeah, they're very weak. They're, I mean, they're probably the worst faction in the game. I mean, let me see. Second worst faction in the game. Apparently, Vampire Counts are doing worse than them. But aside from that, nobody else is. Um, like Elite Troops? Probably just lose the Trolls. and the Maybe, though, maybe on the right map you could get away with it. Maybe. Because, like, by going elite like this, you you definitely... Um, one sec, I'm going to be checking the rounds to see. Yeah, so, I mean, we have a good tiebreaker now. Obviously, Housecat's probably going to win all his games. Um, okay, so two games have finished. One, two, three, four. Hadries and Subutai are playing right now. That's pretty funny. The nice sweaty duel right there. Ghoul and Pink. Jeff, Bob, and Bear. And Professor Pwn and Prepare for the Bear. Yeah, well, let, let's look, actually look at the numbers and see. I know I'm just saying stuff off the top of my head, but we have the data. So let's look. Yeah, Chaos Orbs are 37% win rate right now. What's their record against Warriors of Chaos? Oh, they actually had a decent 2-2, two and two, so apparently they have some ways. It probably is just abusing trains, to be honest, like spamming the Chaos Dwarf trains and just being really cheesy. But that sucks because that's like, you know, that doesn't feel like it's the faction identity. They have a good win rate versus Nurgle and Vampire Counts in Norska, so that's good. So maybe maybe I can do a little something something there. We'll go cheese in the next few games and see if we can get some some dubs that way. All right, so let's see here. Yeah, Bale Taurus character probably you just get this and this and this. No, wrong one. All right, so that and then that and that. Why is it putting it in the wrong one there? Yeah. Why can we not bring more of those? Missile units, rare chariots, rare single entities. Okay, so that's why you go Astrogoth, probably. Yeah, you just go with Foghorn here. And then you can get a third train. Yeah, that that's good. But then you're, you, you're really basically just Benny Hill running from the Nurgle champions, right? That's, that's like what I'd be concerned about. Although you could do something like this. So Cascading Fire Cloak and Flamestorm. Yeah, I like that combo. That actually felt good. Um, Kindle Flame is moderately useful, I guess. Yeah, I guess it's not terrible, and we can keep the uh, the black hammer. What about like some real heavy cheese like this? This is like your build. It's just like pure se. Because these guys are anti-large fighters. In theory, they could hold their own against Nurgle champions. Turn will there be? Yeah, we'll be doing an Age of Empire stream in the next few days. Yeah. Any items worth bringing? Probably not. Yeah. Like this, as sad as I am to say, this kind of looks like it would be pretty respectable against what we just played against. Like this would be our best chance, like fighting back here and then calling in artillery and yeah, it's just cheese. It's just cheese, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's the way. All right, so checking the tournament. We've got a little bit of time. 
Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed the stream, man. Yeah, we're going to do more age streams, more Dune streams, more Total War, all sorts of goodness. Um, we started at, what, 235, give or take? Two games have finished. So I would imagine the other ones are probably wrapping up right now. How do you fix the Chaos Dwarves? Ooh, this is actually a good opportunity for me to show you a little something, something. Hang tight for one second. All right, so one moment. Where are we at? So, Chaos Dwarves, you want to see? All right, so I think that looks good. One sec here. So these are the changes that we um, submitted to CA for the Chaos Dwarves, which would be really good, I think. I'm going to pull them up in just a second. We can go over these until the, the game starts. Really, the Chaos Dwarf infantry are just turbo overpriced um, and really terrible. So like, if you can buff the Chaos Dwarf troopers, then uh, it would really go a long way for the faction. You could go wider um, without like being weak, you know, because going wide with Chorps is very inefficient, I guess, because the inefficiency of the, the troops. Uh, one sec here. Just making sure it's like... Uh... All right, outstanding. And here we are, all right. Yeah, so basically, these are the changes we submitted to CA. Uh, I don't have the most confidence that they'll do them all, but you know, if anything goes through, it's nice. So Hobgoblin Cutthroats, minus 25. Sneaky Gits are awful. They should be like way cheaper. 75 on those, minus 50 on Chaos Dwarf Warriors, minus 75 on the Chaos Dwarf Great Weapons, um, Infernal Guard cost reduction, Hobgoblin cost reduction. So you see how a lot of the Chaos Dwarf core is overpriced and needs a reduction. It's kind of the school of thought. Um, the Bull Centaur Hero making him more viable. He's certainly overpriced when you compare him to like Nurgle champions who are just way better in pretty much every way. Um, monster buffs, Kadai getting a leadership buff so they're more viable because currently Kadai and Kadai Destroyers, they just uh, crumble. They just fold like pieces of paper because of their leadership, right? As soon as they get the demonic instability, they're just gone. Whereas like other monsters infantry will route and come back, they're just gone. So giving him a leadership buff to make it harder to do that. Um, slight nerfs on the Sorcerer Prophet character because he just massively overshadows everything. Um, Zaytan gets a little bit of a buff as well. Um, and uh, just do his stats. Orc Labors, adding some baseline stats to them. Um, and you can see just slight cost reductions to the Bull Centaurs. Like little things like that would be really good. Really, really good. So, I mean, they're not like crazy buffs, but like those buffs compounded on one another, I feel could bring Chaos Dwarfs back up to like 45, 50%. You know, Pwn, you had a close game, dude. I got, I got absolutely owned, dude. It was just like, it was bad. I mean, we played the objectives okay, but we couldn't deal with the character goon squad. Can we expect some Realms of Rune content when it launches? Oh yeah, dude, for sure. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so where are we at? Let's refresh and see. I don't think that I don't think that old CA is going to do all the changes though. I like, yeah, I don't know. I I, I have a, a lingering feeling that they're going to like take the feedback and just like balance the game based on their own internal data, which comes from their quick battles, which literally have the worst maps. They have unit cap bugs where you can pick thirty Zangors in your army. It's just like, and if they're bouncing off that, then we're ba we're basically doomed. Yeah, but we'll see. We'll see. The AP blasting charges aren't really necessary. No, I don't think you need to do that. Yeah. So we'll see. But um, yeah, we'll get there, man. We'll get there. Yeah, no, we, we're still, they're, they're going to be submitted. Nerexa, yeah, you got it. Ghoul Baby and Pink and Jeff Bob are still playing their games. Should be wrapping up soon. How do you feel about select? I have, I'm not sure what you're referring to. You'd have to be more specific. Are you going to be uh, trick or treating? <laughs> no, we're we're giving out. We're doing the uh, the candy giveaway this year. It's for, our neighborhood's pretty insane for that. What if someone makes a mod that implements these changes? I don't want to do that. Yeah, I because I want it to be the same as the base game that people are playing on ladder, or as close as possible to that. You know, should squig herds be infantry sized? Um, no problem. Are they infantry sized? Are they monstrous right now? I think they are. I don't know. Squigs are pretty big, but yeah, they could be infantry sized. I don't know about the bouncing implications of that. It's kind of a weird one. Yeah, because like theoretically, you would want to fight a squig with like a spear, right? Like that makes a little bit more sense. 
yeah, I don't want to do like balance mod stuff. Look, CA isn't paying me to do that. Well, you know, we collected a lot of great players to give them feedback. And uh, once we get the information all to them and everything, then yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Turn, if you get a chance to check out the new Dune, Dune, the Baron model, perfect. Big chunkus. Oh, they made a uh, Legos for, uh, for Dune. That's pretty cool, actually. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so we should be starting in the next like five minutes or so. It's um, going to be a quitty, pretty quick round of games here. As it's a smaller tournament, we didn't give a lot of notice, but we still got around 15 people, which is great for such a short notice event. So Ghoul and Pink are playing it out, and uh, yeah. So against Warriors of Chaos, this seems good, um, but the problem is, yeah, you're going to be dealing with the Nurgle champions. So these guys have 6,200 HP. So can I add an AI? No, I'd have to go to Nurgle. Okay, so let's look at this. 48, 42, but yeah, the Nurgle has healing too. I think the Nurgle guys are... Not quite as tanky, and they do lack... So the Bull Center Torix should actually be a good answer against single entity character cheese. Huh, that's interesting. So maybe maybe there is something to those characters, those Bull Centaurs. But like, uh, an ideal Nurgle champion only costs 1,100, right? And then you go back to Chaos Dwarves, and let's look at the Bull Centaur character. 1,200. Hmm. Is there any items we're missing? Yeah, but they, okay, here's the thing, but when the Nurgle character is dueling the Bull Centaur, he's going to poison him. And the Bull Centaur's weapon strength is going to go below 300, which probably makes him lose that duel. Poison is a big factor in single entity dueling. Maybe take the heroes and Sorksek and heal the trains instead. Maybe, maybe. But then, like, how are you going to kill those Nurgle characters? I guess you just run from them and ignore them and kill their capture weight, right? Is how you do it? Yeah. We'll see. We will see. Squeaks come in the size from human uh, to elephant, so large team's fair. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I don't know why elven spearmen are so lightly armored. That is that is something I've never really understood. I mean, then they added silver in, which kind of like is what spearmen should be. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like they're wearing like full, they're like in full armor, it looks like. Yeah, they have like pretty nice stuff. So you got 40 armor on this scion of Mathlan, right? Like fully armored elf wearing like highly crafted gear, right? And then you go to the green skins and you just look at Grom the Paunch. He's like a shirtless chubby dude and he's got 100 armor. It's, there's some funky stuff for sure. Um, rounds complete. Thank you, Pwn. Appreciate you, man. All right. Let's get it. Let's get it. Okay, perfect. Oh yeah, I understand what you're saying, Sidetail. So yes, like quick battles would probably have better data pertaining to uh beginner players yes and like that and like like lo like lower level players absolutely but the problem is with the my big issue with bouncing around quick battles is the really the terrible maps number one which are just riddled with choke points um and, and pathing issues and number two is the uh the fact that sorry i'm just trying to pass the uh, advance the round here and number two is that unit caps are an issue right so if i go into quick battles with any number of factions. Like, let's say I'm in a quick battle with Zinch, okay? Zangors don't have unit caps. I could just bring like seven of them and have like a super optimized, like powerful infantry core, right? Um, same thing exists for several other units that are bugged on unit caps. So if you're bouncing around that data while not taking into account egregious bugs, then um, yeah, that's that's not good. All right, so who are we losing to in the second round? Oh my God, it's the it's Pwn. We got Professor Pwn. The prophesized loser battle. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. Hell yeah, let's go. All right. So where's where's the mighty professor? Here he is. Okay. Hell yeah, baby. Let's go. We got Chaos Dwarfs versus Vampire Counts. That should be fun. That should be fun indeed. All right, let's get it. Do Chaos Dwarfs have elephant mounts? No, they don't. They have like these like, like bulls on fire, which are really cool. Um, what is the map that we're facing them on, by the way? Am I going to be sent to this is this is the battle to determine who is going to be the Lord of the Pits. Is it going to be me or is it going to be Professor Pone? Probably on this map. I'm it's not a good map for me. Although we, we have some we have some tricks of the trade here. Time to march to my doom. I don't know, man. This is a weird matchup. <laughs> oh, my God. Let's get it. All right, guys. Let's have some fun. Grom's beer belly is probably why he has 100 armor. I know. Your battles shall be legendary, my lord. He almost picked Chaos Dwarfs too while we were uh, loading in, which would have been pretty funny. All right. So let's see how we want to play this. So we are going to bring you guys. Yes. And yes. 
And then, um, what else do we want to bring? Where are the Chaos Siege Giants? I'm sure there will be a Chaos Surf, uh, like, DLC someday. Although well, Vampire Coast still hasn't gotten one, so they could be one of those factions that just get, like, no milk whatsoever. I don't know, man. I don't know. All right, so for characters, I think we pull you out. We can do this and this. Looking good. All right. All right. Let's just find the most, like, ridiculous, janky build we can possibly do. <laughs> Oh god, dude. All right. We're we're losing it. I'm losing my mind. We're we're going a little bit too crazy here, I think. Oh man, okay. So it's it's go time, baby. We're going to let the hate flow super hard in this one. Super super hard. Okay. So obviously cryptors are a little bit of an issue, right? I think they are. Um and then for the rest of the troopers, we can call in you guys. Oh man, this build is just so haggard. That means we get Zaytan? No, Zaytan is not good here. We're doing something else which I think is going to be adequately evil. <laughs> Alright, let's get you. Yeah, dude, well, why not? Let's just bring every every shitty thing we can find in this game. That's, that's the way to do it. All day. All day, baby. Chaos Storms are just so janky, dude. It's like the, the, the symmetry of their roster is just so weird. Um, okay, that looks fine, more or less. Don't think he can do much here. Yeah, I like that. I think it's fun. Unlimited power. We're, we're doing it. The unlimited power is coming. All right, that looks great. And um, we can do that too. Cool. You guys are gonna love this build, though. I promise you, it's uh, it's 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 a, tr it's a true masterpiece, a truly majestic work of art. All right, so that looks fine. Now, what else do we want to have in reserve? Um, we have enough of those. We have literally no. <laughs> Oh, it's so haggard. Oh, it's so janky. Pwn is coming with the dreaded black coach. I don't know if he would. A black coach would be really, really... Um, I don't know. I don't think it'd be that great here. I could be wrong, though. I could be wrong. 100%. Um, so we got 800 gold left. Super awkward amount. Let's throw you into reserve here. And then as far as the rest of this funny business goes... 800 gold left. God, it's such an awkward amount. It's so awkward. For Chaos Dwarves, they have like nothing in that price range that's like acceptable. All right, let's slap some chevrons on you. Although, probably can just go with the shielded variant and then maybe get like a laborer to go with him. And over on the other side, we got two of you. Is there any way I can afford anything fancier here? I don't think so. Don't think that's gonna happen. All right, boys, just release the release the full just haggard chaos sword faction. Pone is gonna be trembling in his boots when he sees our beloved build. Okay, that's probably not good. So we probably cut that. What 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 are we missing out on here? Like, what's what's the what's the the thing that could be the secret tech that we're missing? Maybe this is good. Yeah. Okay, 750, really? You're gonna do me like that? Okay, I guess I have to cut you. Alrighty, let's party. Let's have some fun, man, let's see what happens. I don't know how this is gonna go, but I feel like Pone's gonna do something real wild also. You know, max Chevron laborers. Oh, that's some that's some big, big fancy tech right there. Some big fancy tech right there for sure. But no, that's not gonna be the scheme here. Up in the sky, we got you and you, yeah. Looking pretty sweet. Oh, we should have brought El Gordo. Yeah, Gordo's backstabber fighting on that objective, dude. Hell yeah, that's pretty metal. Yeah, White Kings are strong. They're very strong, but I'm ready. Does the three by three pick and ban system work? Yeah, it works very well. It's it's a great system, Nick. It's a really good system. Um, it takes a little bit longer, but overall it's it's very good. I need to pick a cool banner, by the way. Oh, I should have gone foot Drazhoeth. That's what I wanted to do. Damn, damn. 
the Draz Hoeth uh, play was going to be there. I almost went with the Dreadquake Mortar, but that's just like, that's just too much, I feel. The build's already very weird and skewed, so we're, we're doing something a little bit more reasonable here. Thank you guys for joining today. It's been a fun one so far, getting absolutely karate chopped in the first game by Warriors of Chaos. And uh, now we're going to see what we can do. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, indeed. Fully armed and operational battle station, yeah. We have some jank, some good stuff. It's um, it's a combination of both. This is a, this is a Bale Taurus build, because I feel like Bale Tauruses will dominate Vampire Counts in the Sky pretty hard. Um, could be wrong. I would be pretty sad if that... If that he would have to break like double Death Shriek to win that. Plus like some bats and Vargeists. Because Death Shrieks would probably lose to a Bale Taurus because of the fire damage. Although they have access to Invo, so maybe they can get healed. Hmm, hard to say. All right, guys. Absolute, just filthy build. So, like, I think this is what Chaos Dwarves have, like, devolved to. Is, like, having to use, like, single entity cheese. Taking it back to the land battle days. Back in early land battle ladder, this was, like, this is, like, you know, abusing single entities. Like, you used to run into builds like this in Warhammer 1. <laughs> so, we got this. We got the, the double flyer, okay? We got... Astrogoth, we got the Demon's Tongue Train, we have a Death Shriek, and um, a character, and he's just going to be using heals on the train. That's basically it. So, good luck to Pwn. Eat a uh, chew to Chaos Dwarves. <laughs> We're going to call in some cool-ass units. We're going to call in the Immortals here. Dude, you guys, you guys have no idea how this is going to go down. We're just going to be tanking our tournament win rate today. <laughs> that should be the name of the stream. It's always like fun when you start a tournament. You're like, oh, it's going to be so fun playing an off-meta faction today. <laughs> and then you're just like, this is suffering. The Warhammer 1. Dude, Warhammer 1 was so shitty, the multiplayer. I mean, it was still cool because it was Warhammer. But when I look back at it, I'm like, oh, my God. It was so bad. Like, people used to hide their entire armies in, in like, the bushes to avoid getting spirit. And their lords in bushes the entire battle to avoid getting spirit leeched. It was just, like, such memes. What do we got over there? The tithe? Okay. Pwn's probably trembling in his boots right now. Oh, he's got a White King and a Corpse Cart with the Unholy Lodestone. All right, let's go have some fun. The Zero Capture Weight build, I know, that's what it is. We're going to send some Capture Weight uh, around, don't you worry. We're going to call in some big guns here in a minute. All right. What What is Pwn doing? Why, why is he so still? Okay, this should be here. Here's our Capture Weight, this character. Is he AFK? Okay, no, he's moving. I was just, I was a little concerned he was maybe. He's probably saving up for Blood Knights is what I would probably think would be the right idea. So I got to be careful here. And um, what we're going to do is call in some big Chunguses, the, the, uh, the, the Immortals. They're going to, they're going to pop out when you, when you need them. All right. So we'll start blasting this. I'm going to try and bait out a summon from him here. Let's get the Flamethrower of Doom going. And we're going to pretend to land here on these guys. And then I'm going to see what he calls in. What did he call in? Oh, Hexrace. What the hell? Okay, that's wild shit. Not too worried about Hexrace, to be honest. We're going to send some elite Dawizar troopers over there. Hexrace should get annihilated, like, really hard by us. <laughs> oh, God. All right. I could be wrong. Maybe the Hexrace got something. I don't know. We're going to kind of test the waters here a little bit. Let's get in, pound those guys, pull back, and then Foghorn can get ready to go. Yeah, we want to get the Hex Race like out in the open field a little bit. Oh, look at the heat-seeking missiles there, huh? That's some crazy shit. All right. So now let's turn around, and we can target them and make them... Uh, we can do Flaming Sword of Ruin for a damage buff. And just start giving them the dirty, basically. And we're going to send one of you guys over here. Let's go grab that. And you can see the Hex Race are just getting melted horribly. Oh my god, it's just pure punishment. All right. <laughs> they are certainly in critical binding, and they are not a cheap unit. That's an interesting tech from old Pwn. He's trying something new, which I respect, but it's going to melt against this Bale Taurus blob 100%. So they're crumbling right now. We got some Wolf Riders over there, which should be able to take the zombies, and now we move out this way. If those had been Blood Knights, it's a bit of a different story, but they were not. So let's go ahead and switch on to... Um, is that Krell? Oh, <laughs> no, it's a White King. Okay. So those Hex Rays are dead. Um, our elite Chow, we are heading over to this point. And uh, I have a good feeling about this game already. I'm like, I'm feeling it. All right, let's move down this way. 
<laughs> Those things got wrecked so hard. Dear God. How's that looking over there? Good. All right. The boys are hanging in there. You guys ready to see something funny? Watch this. Okay. We're going for it. And we are going to go ahead and put the Astrum down here. All right. So probably going to be able to kill his Lord in a couple seconds here. If the other Bale Taurus decides to attack... <laughs> oh, they're missing everything! Oh, the Cloak of Mist and Shadows. It gives them Fizz Res, but they do magic damage, I think. No, they only do fire. Okay. So that's how he's surviving. I was wondering what sort of witchcraft was afoot. All right. So let's get the uh, the Chowee Warriors going here. The Immortals should win their fight down there pretty decisively. Let's pull the uh, Corpse Guard down there, too. All right. Let's pull back. Cloak of Mist and Shadows saved him. Very well played. The Tithe actually hanging in there like champs. All right. Let's move here. Oh, we got a Death Shrieker. Okay, that's cool. So let's get you guys back and you guys back, and we can go ahead and switch on to um, the Terror Geist now. I'm pretty sure our guy wins that. Not sure. Should be good. The bottom objective is going to go to us eventually, too. So far, the Dowie train is melting these guys. So let's go after these. And, uh, yeah, we're going we're gonna to kill this thing pretty easily, I think. Well, as a matter of fact, we'll just take down the Corpse Cart there. All right, so let's go ahead and pop the Flaming Sword of Ruin right here. And that 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 beast is going to die super quickly to our boy. And in the back, it looks like there's some counterplay being called in. Um, next call for us is going to be the... Um, did we get it low? Yeah, it's already getting beaten up pretty bad here. All right, so the bottom objective is starting to flip to us. And now we just move in, attack these bats, no problem. And uh, we can get Astrogoth going for it. And yeah, the two Bale Taurus characters are going to just beat the hell out of this Terror Geist here. All right. So how are we looking here? Uh, bottom objective's going to us. It has gone to us. Nice Imbo right there. Let's have one of you guys peel down there and attack. I think we only need one to kill the Terror Goose. Oh, oh Heinrich's on foot. Oh, that's why he's dodging all those attacks. All right, that's interesting. So Blasting Charges on the Graveguard Grey opens. And um, what are the call do we want? Yeah, it's just going to be Kadai next. All right, so get down there, buddy. Take down that giant goose. And uh, we can do some sort of Ash Storm here to make them weak to fire, which is super metal and thematic. And let's call in big boys in the middle to move in. Retreat with you. Bottom objective's going good. And did we get the big man down? Ash Storm's nice because it imbues fire weakness and makes him slower. So it's really good for like character gooning and stuff. All right, Astrogoth, you keep going here, buddy. And where are the Kadai? All right, so keep going. Get right, them back. And I think we killed the Goose. Yeah, this is a Krell summon, which is pretty cool. But overall, we should be fine. We're going to move in and try and goon him out again. Astrogoth is infantry size, so he should be okay. We're going to go after these Graveguard. And the Kadai are now going to move in and just eviscerate these dudes. And now we have our Death Streak back online, which is going to be pretty brutal. We're going to go Spray Fire mode and take down those Graveguard Great Opens. And it looks like we got your boy Heinrich here. The Chaos Storms are such a cheesy faction. It's like the only way to play them, you can't play like any normal sort of build. It's always like, it feels like it's always just weird SE cheese. All right, let's uh, rear charge in the back of these guys. Hein Heinrich is definitely a little nervous in there as the big characters. Oh, I just let my Demon Smith die. That's stupid. Okay, well, I wasn't paying attention. That's a huge blunder on my part, but I think we should be fine since we're pretty far ahead uh, value-wise. More Hobo Goblins down there to reinforce, and we get a full surround. This is probably going to be the end of the road for the Vampires. Uh, he, he needs more Cryptors and things like that. Cryptors are the one unit I was like super worried about. All right, so let's keep moving. You guys come over here. Yes. Let's get you going to party. Bale Tauruses are... Oh, okay, he does have some Cryptors in here. No, those are the Devils of Swartzhofen. Okay, interesting. But we have the Immortals backing us up too, which is really rad. The Immortals are super badass. All right. So let's get behind here. Get the Fireborn going. Switch the Death Streak Rocket Launcher to the single fire shot to finish off the Corpse Cart. And now the Kadai are just going to eviscerate these guys. We're going to get behind them and do a rear charge too. Oh, the dreaded White King is back. Or the, uh, the Wraiths. Are, excuse me. Flaming Sword of Ruin. Let's go after the Hex Wraiths. Rear charge here in the middle. Take control of the middle objective. We can unsummon you to get you back into the pool. And Astrogoth, is, uh, he's chilling out. Man, these Immortals are doing pretty good. I mean, they're up to 1,800 value, which is very respectable here against Count Chocula. Death Shriek should polish that off, no problem. All right, let's come down here. 
Um, we can leave these guys to karate chop there. Almost got these uh, hex rays down once again, just showing how terrible of a unit they are. They need the hex rays need some big, big buffs for sure. They're just so bad. They're so, so bad. All right, Collins, let's get some anti large boys to move down there. Do a little bit of crumping, and we have our train of doom, which I had almost forgotten about on the side. And uh, yeah, you guys can just kind of chill between the two objectives and react to whatever he tries to ninja. And the Bale Taurus characters are doing it. Krell is still there. Krell is doing some respectable damage, actually. Yeah, here comes the train. It's going to start really, really punishing the Vampire Count's leadership here. And the Bale Taurus characters, um, let's see if we can get them around and do some breath attacks. Foghorn being very raid boss. We're going to make the entire blob weak to fire damage. And yeah, we can get that White King. Cool. Yeah, so you see he's going for a little ninja over here. Let's pull the uh, Bull Centaurs. We don't, I don't think we need them down here. I think this fight's uh, pretty much on lock here. All right, Foghorn, you keep going. Attack these bad boys. Bale Taurus characters. I, you know what I'm most surprised about is the durability of um, Heinrich Kemmler, though. He's, he's been hanging in like an absolute champ. All right, so we're going to park you guys down here. The Death Streak Rocket Launcher. Um, let's keep shooting there. Heinrich being on foot makes him a very difficult target, actually. Yeah, and you guys just wait to attack the bats, basically. Okay, he's going this way. So we move them down to screen. Let's kill that White King if we can. Fireborn doing the work. Let's get those guys to screen here. You to rear charge in there. And Collins are going to be more Bull Centaur renders. Let's get them up and up. Yeah, the Vampire character squad is holding very, very well. They're doing great. Bull Centaur renders should also trade okay here, but the fact that they're being attacked soon by those doggos is a little bit problematic. All right. Let's pop the train. Come on, buddy. Go help out with those, those guys. There we go. All right. So now that the Flamethrower train's there, it should be very good for us. White King... Flaming Sword of Ruin on the blob. And you guys can blasting charge those zombies into the Shadow Realm. And that's it. GG. All right. So that was just our builds. My build was effective against his. He didn't have enough um, Cryptors to stop my mass. So we were able to just cackle. All right. 2,000, 2,000, uh, 2,800, 24 on the train. Death Street did good. Foghorn did okay. He was more of a support piece. Immortals were cool. Pwn inspired me to use them, actually, because we played a game the other day and he beat me with them. So I was like, oh, let's give him a try. I should have expected, yeah. Well, Pwn, you saw me lose my first game horribly with using a normal build. So then we just went straight to the cheese. Yeah. Uh, all right. Outstanding. So checking to do a little bit of admin work. Okay. Just double checking here to see if he's actually dropped. So we had someone drop from the event. All right, there we go. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, sign ups for the score. Subutai should not have three, so let me go fix that. Outstanding. Yeah, it's just charfs are charfs are very cheesy. Yeah, they're very cheesy. Oh, you didn't see the build from the first game? Yeah. Yeah, this was this is just how you play them, right? It's just like this kind of shit. Yeah, I think it is. All right. So one sec, guys. Got to do a little bit of a uh, admining work here, and let's switch this up to here. Fix that. Should have a couple people with two wins. Um, Pink should have uh, checking there. Should have the one. Did they win their first game? No. Okay. The other Chorf players are uh, are going down hard. <laughs> us, us Chorfs need to stick together. Hey, if we can go 50-50 today, I'm going to be happy. That's the game plan. Um, I guess we're going to be cheesing the rest of the day. That's, that's going to be the plan. By the way, guys, for any of you who've been enjoying Dune Spice Wars, we uh, are going to have a tournament coming up soon, which is very exciting. We managed to get a full uh, setup of 16 people. And um, it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned for details on that. I've also found a way to cast other people's games in Dune Spice Wars. That could be okay. Um, so yeah, should be good. But what was the? But what was more cheesy of your single entities is versus? Uh, Nurgle can fight. Say, Nurgle Vampire Counts can fight the SE game, but 
I, I feel like that would be kind of hard for them. Vampire Count's best bet to win that matchup would be to go wide on the objectives and just win on points, I, I would say, if we're um, if we're talking about that. All right, so Chaos Dwarves, um, report score, Chaos Dwarves versus Vampire Counts. The two lowest tier factions in the game duking it out for the spot in the pits. You're ready to lose in the tournament? I'm very excited for it. I'm going to make uh, an announcement soon, and the pods are almost finalized. I've been doing them by based on uh, time zones and everything, like where people are. So, hey, hey, all right. Look at that. So, two games left to finish. We had a couple drops. All good. It happens. Um, Icarus won their first game. No, lost the first game, so they should have one point. So, let me fix that because of the buy round. All right. I think your trains... Yeah, well, what you do, Pwn, is you... Um, I played this matchup a bit with Subutai. You basically, you go zombie, skeleton, spears, and you spam Cryptors with them. So the Cryptors can at least block the trains down. Yeah, Vampire Counts are one of the worst factions right now. They're like, they're definitely low tier. Um, and a big reason for that is Vampire Counts still have like some strengths, but the things that, I'll, I'll show you why. Just give me one second. I'll show you why. Um, all right, one sec, that's loading up. You can't really, the elite infantry against dwarfs isn't going to work in my, they're, they're very good at killing elite troops actually. All right. So vampire counts got nerfed last patch a little, or a couple patches ago, right? Um, which, you know, they were sitting okay last season, despite the nerfs. They were sitting around like what, 50, 55%, something like that. But what happened is Kislev got just disgusting DLC buffs with the huntsman, the things in the woods, anti-large mortis engine. Beast Ben got an armored front line plus a mortis engine monster. Um, and then you also have Zinch. Zinch got uh, one of the most disgusting monsters in the game. The Mutal of the Beast with Kairos healing it just annihilates vampire counts. And Warriors of Chaos got that as well. So like five or six factions got some changes in this patch, which just absolutely crushed vampire counts. These were matchups which previously vampire counts could like function in, several of them, but now it's just like, you basically just get wrecked in all those matchups as vampire counts. So that is why their win rate went down. It's because of the power creep stuff in the DLC. Yeah. Like the the vampire counts don't even have the best more dissension, right? Like the other factions just do it better than them. Yeah, it's it's wild stuff. All right. How the mighty have fallen. The vampire counts deserve to suck though. They've been they've just been pure misery for so long, you know what I'm saying? The vampire counts were just like such a tyrannical force. Pedro, thank you for the fiver. Greatly appreciate it, man. Hope you're doing well. Yes, yes. Early stream, glad to catch it. Hey, glad to have you here. So we are one and one so far. We still have a chance of qualifying for top four, but my hopes of winning the tournament with Torfs, it seems like it'd be tough. Um, who knows? Who knows? Maybe, maybe we can work some magic. I don't really practice them, so. I feel like a really top player, like someone like Houseplant, if they practiced with the um, Torfs a lot, could like find a way to... Um, to win with them. Like if you really practice the cheesiest, most degenerate thing, you could find a way to win. Yeah, who knows? Yeah, I saw the news from the Order of the Dragon and Age Vampires. It looks fun. Yeah, it looks really fun. Vampire counts without yeah, they're 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 suffering a little bit. Well, vampire counts large isn't anti-large isn't the best. Yeah. I mean you have blood knights. Blood knights are not a bad unit, but you have to have really ideal engagements for them. Um, but like, here's what I would do. If I was playing Vampire Counts, which is one of my weaker factions, regardless, I've seen them played enough. I think I can emulate a build. Um, where the hell are they? Count Choculus down here. Okay. So if I was going Vampire Counts against, um, Chaos Dwarves, probably would be something, oh, this is a uh, Skirmish vs. AI. Okay. So we need to go into the lobby, do this, and do that. All right. It was an old build. I like Vampire Counts. Now that they're not OP, it's they, it definitely is fun to play them. They they have like a lot of neat flavor. Yeah, you would want to max out on stuff like this, okay? So then you have those guys. Um, this would be like the core of your build. Um, you could mix in the Sternsmen or something too if you want like a little bit more meat in in there. But I think you go double White King. Um, probably throw them on horseback so they can maneuver and 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 at least put some pressure on the Chaos Dwarf trains. Yeah, with Scab's Grave, it's not bad for clearing out chaff units. Although against the um, against them, maybe not. So now we need to find a way to 
decide on the Lord. Vlad is not bad. He's extremely tough to remove. You can slap him down on objectives. Um, you could also go Manfred von Baldstein and just have him flying around on his Hellsteed, like spamming Spirit Leech or anything like that. But I wouldn't even hate a Vlad pick. Just like an Invo and um, Raise Dead Vlad. Um, Master Beguilement, you probably don't need that here. R of Dark Grandeur, you don't really need it. Um, you want the healing, and the Karstein Ring is okay, but I don't think you need it too much either. So from here, you would just basically do something like this. Like This would be a decent opening style. And then from here, you have Dire Pack, a couple Scurvy Dogs. I do like the Felbats for Disruption. It's not bad at all. Um, Corpse Guards, you can throw in. They are very vulnerable to Death Shrieks, though. So that's something you got to put some respect on the name. A Blood Knight. Um, I don't know. Yeah, from here, it's like I have more trouble with it. But basically, you're just going to be like swarming. Absolutely swarming. All right. So refreshing. Let's see what we got. Checking here on the old games. Okay, it looks like it looks like one game still to go. Undefeated players are Subutai, Noctrum, and uh, House Cat. So we have Skaven, Bretonia, and Warriors of Chaos undefeated so far. A um, couple people at one win as well. So we're going to have some interesting uh, matchups here, I am sure. You could go double Blood Knight. Yeah, it, it, it could be a thing. Like double Blood Knight could be good. Um, and from there, you know, you're going to want some speedy infantry. So you could do also Feasters in the Dusk to like sneak around and pressure an artillery piece isn't like the worst play in the world. Um, the Corpse Carts are good. Let's see here. So let's see what we got. Super. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh. The person who joined Super Furious Oh god, that's so funny, dude. Holy shit. Uh, I'm sorry, Super Furry. I'm in a tournament, so uh, we can't play right now. As much as I would be terrified of what your Slanesh army might bring here. Um, all right, so maybe like one or two corpse carts to call in in the mid game, and then we can get some Graveguard great weapons. And I would like to find a way to get like the Sternsman too, if I can. <laughs> going to the Beast, but now, okay, I, I see where you're going with this. Then they just leave. Then they just leave. <laughs> that, was pretty, that was pretty good. Uh, and that's someone we know too, I bet. It's like someone, yeah, because it, they had the mod pack on, which means they're probably a tournament player. So, all right. Here we go. Let's get it. Oh god, Pwn. Dude, Pwn, get that out of here, dude. Alright, cool. So the round is all set. Let's advance it, and let's advance the Swiss. What do we got? Wait, that can't be right. It has Pwn and I duking it out again. Um, <laughs> it's probably because we have the closest tiebreaker score. Oh my god. Hang on. Okay, let me talk to Pwn real quick. So it paired. It sometimes does that if you if there's like that if the scores are really weird, you can play each other twice. Um. <laughs> All right. So one second here. <laughs> Do we fight again? <laughs> Or does one of us want to play Jeff Bob? Okay, we fight. So Pwn and I are going to duke it out again. <laughs> the dreaded rematch? I'm sorry, Super Furry, we can't play. All right, so Pwn and <laughs> All right, Pwn and I, let's go. Pwn, join the lobby. Do it. Hopefully, hopefully he wasn't watching the breakdown of the build, although he probably was. We'll see if he uses it. I'm just going to counter the build I just suggested. All right, so let's see what we got here. So the map is going to be uh, Itza. Itza me, Itza. All right, we got Itza. And we're going to have some fun with this, guys. We're going to have some serious fun with this build. It's going to be very fun. I didn't hear no bell. Okay. What could I do that would be very fun? Huh. All right, so we're gonna try something extremely different here to try and surprise him. Then he's gonna do the exact same build and beat us. <laughs> I wouldn't even be upset. That would be very funny, actually. Our battle will be legendary. 
Somehow, Professor Pone has returned, I know. You want to see all the, the trains again? The trains could come. They may very well uh, be mixed in. Don't you worry. Um, all right. So, how can we do this? Oh. <laughs> oh, yes, dude, this is the stuff of the gods. You guys are gonna love every second of this build, all right? Oh my god. How can we make this work? Um, hmm. Okay. Let's like not screw that up again. And um, then we need to save a little bit more money somehow. We can cut that and then we can get one more thing here. All right. Well, um, all right then. You guys are about to see one of the worst builds I've ever brought in a tournament game. <laughs> but if we win it, which is possible, you know, it's possible. We will go down in the halls of history as a mighty champion. So that's the, that's the game plan here. Oh man, this build's bad. Oh god, this is this is probably the worst build I've ever brought an attorney. It's got to be up there. Um, all right, so that's good. Let's see what else we would want to bring. We mix you in, get a couple of you guys, a couple of you guys, get the core here, and then we're gonna want these. Need some anti-large. And um, then we got 300 gold left, so let's get some labors and do glorious battle. Oh god. Oh, this build is so shit, dude. Ugh. Hold on. Let's see if we can do this instead. No, that's not going to work. Okay. I don't know if we need either of these items, to be completely honest. Yeah, we can do that. That's kind of a cool combo, actually. All right, if po if I if I win this, we'll truly banish the vampire counts to the pits of eternity for all hell. I don't have any hopes of winning this tournament, so we're going all out, baby. A laborer build. Um, shit, I just realized I have a glaring weakness in my build. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, you're not seeing Zaytan, but you're seeing something even more haggard. This is this is just no Max Fireglaive Rush. No, 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 no. Have you, when was the last time in a tournament game you guys have seen a Dreadquake Mortar being towed by the Iron Demon ROR for thirty five hundred gold? <laughs> oh yeah, dude. I could. I have a a really good chance of losing this, like a serious chance of losing this. But I think we might be able to work some, some Haggard schemes into it. We just have to hope Pwn didn't like see the build we suggested. And if that's, if that's the case, then... <laughs> waka waka, your worst build ever has a glaring weakness. So, we brought, we brought the Iron Demon ROR. And it's going to be towing a, uh, towing a Dreadquake Mortar. We have the Kadai Destroyer. <laughs> and a magma cannon. Oh yeah, baby, let's go. This is this is what dreams are made of. When you guys go to sleep at night, this is what you see, I would imagine. A little burning head character. We got a magma cannon, which is just gonna sit. I don't know. We probably want to just park it like back here somewhere. Uh, he is going to be healing. Hopefully, I don't forget this time. Yes, dude. Yes. The dreaded demon's tongue, dreadquake mortar. <laughs> Do you think the undead are weaker in this format? No, no, undead undead were good. They got nerfed heavily because they were super dominant. So CA just probably over nerfed them a little bit. Dude, I don't know. I don't know if Pwn can handle this. The club can't handle him right now. Oh, God. No, he brought like an anti-single entity build. All right, we need to get into the bushes here. Shit, do I have enough anti-large to deal with those guys? I don't know. Oh, we're so toast, guys. We have like no chances here. <laughs> this is so bad. Oh, oh, dude. Please, Pwn. Please. It was just a prank. It was just a prank. All right, we need to get our haggard characters together. Unga bunga. No, the Dreadquake's going to keep shooting, too, because it's bugged. 
Oh, look at that! The magma cannon with a direct hit. All right, let's go infernal characters. He's going to keep looping around this way. <laughs> okay, where is he going? He's going this way. But we have the we have the most dreaded of all could eyes. Oh, magma cannon point blank miss. No. Okay. Dodge it. Uh, Duke it. Okay, we need to get the big man in there now. Let's go, big man. I think we went too deep deep in the meme meme territory, guys. All right, so Bull Center renders. Let's call him out. And um, we got a burning head in the back back pocket too. The dreadquake is gonna go do some dreaded quakes. And uh, yeah, we have the demon smith sorcerer guy coming too. Okay, so let's get us around on this thing if we can. Yeah, we want to move up and around it and absolutely pound this thing. If we can get a trade here, then it's it's probably worth. We haven't been able to really hit it too well yet, but you know, so far it is taking some damage. All right, so we're gonna go get the party buffs going here. And um, yeah, we're doing good damage to this beast. It could fall for sure. I don't know how we do here. We can reforge this preemptively. Okay, let's do the uh, Vial of Blood and Darkness. Make it a little bit weaker to the fire damage. And um, now we can go ahead and call on you guys. All right, this goose is crumbling pretty hard. It's, uh, it's taken a bit of a beating, uh, for sure. And now we can tell this thing to fire. All right, I like that. Let's go get the objective here. The Bull Centaur renders are cackling all the way to the bank. And the Dreadquake Beast, okay, good, it's shooting up here. It's good, it's good. It's exactly what we need. Yes, go forth my deathless minions. The dreaded high value magma cannon plays will be known across all the lands. Okay. I don't know, this is gonna be a hard one to win. We're already like pretty behind. Okay, we got burning heads though, so we have some crowd clearing tools. Uh, we need to get a Bail Terror's character next. How's the Dreadquake train doing, by the way? I think it's, I don't know, I think it might be bugged. I don't know if the other element of it is shooting. If he, maybe he chases that thing, the train. The train can ra outrun that stuff pretty well, though. Yeah, it looks like he's going for it, so we need to um, pull you in. Get you guys to go clear, and you guys to go clear here as well. Pull our anti-large goon squad up here. All right, full power. Run, buddy, run! <laughs> All right, so we'll go try and get some burning head action over there, having a little party. And um, we got no blunderbusses, but the train is pretty quick with the all hands on deck thing. All right, let's do this. Roasty off that objective there. The dread train is fleeing the scene, but we got the reinforcements coming. He tries to tarp hit me with the zombie summon, which is definitely not gonna work. Um, Bull Centaur renders are on their way. Just keep moving, get you guys to move up and fight. And now we just maneuver down this way. All right, so that side point should be ours. Next up, we maybe call in some Kadai or something. I think that could be cool. All right. Oh, the Dreadquake shot from downtown, the MLG Dreadquake. Is it gonna hit? <laughs> this is the most haggardly chaotic game we've ever had. All right. So where are we at? Come on, Dreadquake. It's a weird game too, for sure. It's very strange. All right, let's get a Bail Taurus out. That'll help us fight these monsters, his, his monster goon squad. Dreadquake sending a message to the homies. All right, let's get you here. Get an objective. Pull this thing in. Now we got the Bail Taurus. Let's get the Chorfs heading up there. Maybe they'll be able to get it eventually, who knows. But that side point looks like it belongs to us. And these Bull Centaurs can go here and they can get ready to go here. Does he want to fight? Maybe he does. I'm not sure. We'll see. All right. So we get the big boys onto the right targets. Um, we do have some call-ins, which would be good here. But now it looks like, yes, they are going to be landing. Let's pull you guys back. And we can do a big descend on this build here. All right. So that looks good. That looks good. We got the Bail Taurus character. You're doing it. And you can come over here too to party. All right. So this is basically just, I don't know how the hell this is going to go. Probably badly. Um, there are zombie summons. We have the Bull Centaur renders. 
Um, the big man, the Kadai Destroyer, is not very good here. We probably lost this game. We memed a little bit too hard. Um, but, you know, we'll see what we can do. We will see what we can do. Zombies have swarmed in. The Bale Taurus character still duking it out. We do see some devils getting worn down. But the blob fight definitely good for the counts. All right, so can we get this, like, train away? If we lose the Dreadquake train, that's going to be so bad. All right, so we're going to, like, run that thing off to the Shadow Realm here. And get it going out this way. What columns could we possibly reinforce with? Nothing really that good here. Uh, the Bale Taurus character is down for the count. We do have our Burning Head character approaching. Come on, baby. Come on. And let's get you back. Come on. Let's go, buddy. And do we want to get the Burning Head here? Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Clear the objectives. Get the train maneuvering. It's still going strong like a champ. Bale Taurus character can go fight Mr. Von Karstein. And, uh, yeah, the train's just going to have to find a way to, to survive here. We have the Kadai Fireborn soon? Not quite. And our big, our big cow man is stuck. Pretty much everything is just going badly. All right. So you keep moving up to the point there versus the zombies. The train, the dread, the dread train is just so bad. Oh, God. But it's so cool also. You deserve all the style points for it, you know. Go, cow man. Shoot him with your pistol. Show him the meaning of uh, whatever. I don't know. Something. Something cool. Could I come in and clean the dogs up? Let's keep running with the dread train, which I believe is unbreakable. Um, we have the Chowie pushing there. Oh, look at that. He has the storm of the night. That's pretty fun. All right. Come on. The dread train will endure. My heart will go on. All right. Do we have anywhere to run? Not really. Okay. Come on, dread train. Get him. Get him. Get him, my pretties. Oh, the flamethrower. Oh, it killed a bunch of my own units. Bad dread train. Okay, my other guy got chased off the battlefield. And the fireborn guys are hunting pretty hard here. How's this guy looking here? Not too hot. Okay, let's get your pistol going here against them. Oh, the train eluded him once again. Let's see if we can take down this goose. Come on. Come on, dread train. Oh, yes. <laughs> what is it even shooting at? What is it even shooting at, dude? Hey, we killed one goose here, which is kind of fun. The Kadai Destroyer actually not doing terribly. Um, is it shooting at those units down there? Oh, it is. Okay, that's kind of cool. All right, let's get it that way and see if it can find any good fights. But one goose is down for the count, and the Destroyer is probably going to be toast here. I don't see any big reinforcements coming in. Maybe a second Fireborn or something, but thankfully the Dreaded Hump animation is still going. All right. So let's take you across, get those Chorf Warriors up there, and we can call in um, another one of you. All right, get these Fireborn going here. I have no idea what's happening with these guys. It's very, very clunky. Come on, Dread Train. How much value has it got? Hey, it's gotten 2,000 value. Respectable. Respectable, not bad, but it's gonna die now for sure. Not before it clears the middle objective for the people. All right, let's go. Okay, let's get you little laborers heading up there for some capture weight. Our Kadai Fireborn Blob, not doing bad, not doing bad. We need to restore the big man if we can. He's having some problems though, for sure. Okay, so these guys are crumbling down. The Dread Train was able to clear off the middle objective, which is hilarious. Um, these guys are crumbling. High ground point should go to us too. No way we have a way back in this game, right? There's no way. I guess the fact that the Dread Train is still going is kind of a funny thing. It's used most of its ammo. I mean, it got close to paying for itself. It tried. It sure tried its heart out. The big man's going to crumble down now, but we have a lot of Fireborn back here, which are just so cool. Um, let's grab you guys. Come around the back. Oh, the mortar shot! Sending a message from the deeps. Come on, train. Let's get us around in these Cryptors, see if we can, like, crumble them all. Come on! Okay, let's do this. Those are Sternsmen, so they're going to endure like champs. Let's do a rear surround on these guys, see if we can break some leadership. And, uh... What the hell? Do we have a triple cap? What planet are we on? Oh, the goose is still struggling to get him. Oh my god, the goose is struggling. No way we win this. No way. There's no way we win this. There's no way. Right? Dude, the fact that this train is still going is hilarious. Alright, let's reforge it, actually. Oh, we're healing it now. The Dread Train's back in business, baby. It's going strong in the fourth quarter. 
How are the Kadai doing here? Ah, uh, they're doing all right. They're hanging in there. Oh yeah, let's go. Let's get those skeleton warriors down. How the hell are these like cryptors here? Such raid bosses, by the way. Those guys have just been going so strong. All right. Oh, he called out another goose. He hates it. <laughs> Come on, Dread Train. Okay. Let's do that. We got some Chorf Warriors coming to party. We got the double cap on him. Is, is Pwn sweating bullets right now is the question. Find out in today's episode. Holy shit. The Dread Train is just still going. All right. So we got the double cap. Unfortunately, we did lose the side objective and my lord. But these Fireborn here are uh, doing the work of the gods. They're doing great. What Collins do we have next? Should we resummon our... Um... Yeah, and we can get you coming back out too to help out a little bit. The Lord has fallen. Uh, the train has finally fallen as well. So it, it fell on hard times, but it was the true champion of its people. Magma Cannon is obviously dead weight here. Uh, what do we want to call? These, these Fireborn, how good are they doing? 1800 value, wow. Talk about, talk about solid performance. Uh, we're just going to call it another big man here in a second. But we do have the double cap, which is kind of cute. Um, the goose is pretty terrible against infantry, so we should last a long time there. And uh, this guy's just going to flee the scene. All right, so I probably need a triple cap in this situation. All right, so we got a big boy. Let's have him fight with the Fireborn. Hopefully he can help crumble some of these down. And uh, we'll have some hobo goblins soon. Turf Warriors fighting hard on the point. The Dreadquake train was too much of a meme, though. It was too deep. Yeah, Cryptors are hard to kill, and they used to be even worse. Uh, they used to actually be straight up imbalanced before some of the balancing changes. All right, Critical Binding. We have our Chowie character is pretty much useless at this point, doing his thing. Um, do we want to grab it here? Not a bad idea. Let's go start ninjing that point. The Cryptors are fleeing the scene. And the high ground point, he has no capture weight there because they're both flyers. <laughs> All right, let's get you around. Our poor Chowie Zar character is on the run. Bale Taurus Man is going to come and start bullying the goose here, maybe. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. The, no, the train didn't even pay for itself, though. Despite the fact that it looks cool, it didn't, it didn't pay for itself. You know, so there's, there, there's a problem. Oh, look at that. The Von Karstein uh, schemes here. It's maybe going to get our big man again. All right, let's move up there. Might as well fight at this point. You know, you're surrounded by the gooses. The storm of the night is going to last another four or five seconds. So let's land here. Probably our best bet. Try and get away. All right, big man. Let's flee the scene. You hold these guys back. And you two can take on the dire pack and up on the top is there anything speedy we can get up there speedy and chaos dwarfs yeah not necessarily the most uh the two things that you would think of right away with them but i think we do actually ninja this point which is really funny is pone scared does it does it does it fear us i don't think so i think he's probably feeling pretty comfortable right now all right let's get you up here see if you could do a little mitigation there we do take down the dire pack and our big cow man has fallen as well all right, let's see if we can get the Cryptors 2v1. Probably not. We have our character back as well. We have the little gremlins heading up to the top point. And, um, you know, I just think the Dreadquake was a little too deep in the meme territory. We didn't put enough respect on Pwn's name. He came out for blood, you know. He came out for blood. Is there any Collins we want to do? I mean, we still do have... Do we have a triple cap on him right now? We do, technically, actually. Jeez. All right, so, yeah. Torf Warriors are rebuilding right now. Um, it would have been really funny to switch it up and come in with like a super elite build. Like super, super elite. Uh, Collins here. We can do these. Oh, we're going to actually mitigate his cap here with these laborers. That's pretty funny how that actually worked out. Call you guys across. Do this. And let's call out the Fireborn. They're going to get there and help secure this point. All right. So yeah, he's a little bit healthier than us, but shouldn't be getting the objective in an expedient manner. Go, my gremlins, go. The Chorf Warriors here are finally going to fold up, it looks like. We still have the cap weight, which is funny. Hey, look who came back. It's the big man in our hour of need. We're actually getting close to passing win points. This one looks like it's going to flip, though. The Kadai will be there somewhat quickly. 
All right, let's attack here. Um, over here, it looks like that character got chased off. Never regret it? Yeah, we're having fun today. I'll do a try-hard tournament soon, but <clears throat> today was definitely fun. We'll get one more game after this, too, where we'll, we'll do something cool, hopefully. All right. So heading up this way, we got the Kadai and some Wolf Rider dudes. We could call some Chorf Warriors up there, maybe. I'm not sure. Let's waddle some over. I don't know if they'll get there before the game's over. But we'll see what happens. Devils, let's attack them with the Fireborn. And, uh, yeah, we'll see. I don't know how that fight actually goes. The Fireborn should win that, right? Maybe. Maybe they should. I don't know. All right, so middle objective is flipping. Pretty much all the objectives are flipping here. Uh, we're just fighting on the top. Let's do this. Have you guys pile back and help out. Get these guys coming. Chorps are heading that way. We'd have to, like, get another cap on him soon, which doesn't seem possible considering he's got, like, Sternsman here and then some, yeah, pretty stalwart fighters in the middle. And I think we just lose this fight, too. GG, well played. It was fun. You know, we got to see the Boom Train in action. That's a good name for it, actually. Let me message Pwn and say GG. So it tried. <laughs> tried. I'm talking to him right now. I'm like, it tried. Hey, but you know what was really cool about that? Hang on a sec. Uh, one sec here. The train got 20. It almost paid for itself, guys. It almost paid for itself. Uh, 2,700, 25 on this bad boy. Magma Cannon was just an absolute shithouse unit. Um, you know what's funny about his build is it still might even lose to the, no, it would probably still beat the double Bail Taurus if I had done that again. But yeah, that's that's pretty funny. Good times. Um, Fireborn could I were badass, dude. The Bail Taurus was definitely the big disappointment. So yeah, GG, well played. <laughs> Super first pack. Oh man, I love it. It was fun, GG. All right, so let's see here. So, Pwn, report that one. Um, somebody's opponent hasn't showed up. Tell him to report the score. And where are we at? Okay, so Pwn reported that somebody's opponent hasn't showed up. Um, let me see if that's still the case. Are we going to actually still have a chance of qualifying, even going 2-2 two and two if we win our last game because of how small the tournament is? That would be really funny. I don't think so, though. I don't think so. It should make Pone and I play for a third time. If that happened, that would just be, like, faded. I think at that point we would just have to do it. You know what I'm saying? Dropped him. All right, cool. There we are. Yeah, the, the Dreadquake was cool. Uh, maybe a regular Dreadquake, but he would have just killed it with his breath attacks. Yeah, but typically against Vampire Counts, probably just Train Spam is the way to do it. Like, it's very nasty. Hmm. Yeah, we tried. We tried, guys. <laughs> it's not my. It's not actually my birthday today. It's not. Do you know about the Cultist Summoning Glitch? I do not. I do not know about this glitch. Okay, looking around here, two games to go. Um, and yeah, we'll see. How's our tiebreaker looking? No, Pone needs to win his next game. I, Guys, the odds of Pone and I playing again are actually super high because of how small the event is. Oh, God. <laughs> In that case, I would have a fun, I would have a fun one if we play again. Just like the, because we both are the only people with one win. The Chorfs and the Vampire Counts. Hmm. Have you ever fought a Bellacore deck? Yeah, I played a Bellacore deck at my local game store. Uh, well, my, my local game store. So me and my friends, we meet at a local bar every Wednesday night and we play Magic. Um, and one of the guys there plays Bellacore. It's okay. It's like a tribal deck. It can pop off if nobody has interaction or removal for Bellacore. But overall, it's not like... Tribal decks and usually aren't the strongest in Commander. But it's still a good, formidable deck if you build it. Because Grixis is a strong color scheme. You know, you can slap in tutors, like Demonic Tutor, Cyclonic Rift. Um, you have really good support pieces. You guys want another one? I'm down for it. I mean, honestly, the odds are looking like it right now. Yeah, the odds are looking that way. Okay, where are we at? Yep, two games left to go. And uh, yeah, the Duel of Fates is upon us.
We will find out who's going to win today's tournament. Yes, yes. Uh, probably, I mean, we have a couple really sweaty players today who are playing their mains. Like, we have a Zinch main who's really good, Ghoul. Um, House Cat is obviously on Walk, and he's a top-tier player in Walk. Because today's tournament is banning the top five factions. So, with those being banned, Walk immediately becomes a top-tier faction. Because they have, um, a lot of their natural predators are gone. Yeah. Casual magic with Demonic Tutor, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know. You know how it is. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I'm saying in Grix's colors. Um, like you, like tribal decks aren't the strongest in magic, but if you soup them up with really powerful staples, like if you come in with demonic tutor, aristic study, like things like that, like that can make them, you know, a little bit better. Yeah. Avacyn's fun. Which one did you build? You build the OG mono white one that gives everything indestructible. That's uh, that one was always my favorite. All right. Came on brackets. Subatai playing versus house cat. There's probably just pools of sweat under them right now. Taking a look, we've had a couple drops today. Um, let's go here. Take a look. All right, Noctrum was able to beat, uh, defeat Ghoul Baby. So Noctrum is undefeated, Ghoul, and a couple other people with two wins. It's funny because if we had just like played, played seriously and tried to get a dub that game, we would actually be in contention for top four, even with our shitty record. <laughs> now we're probably pretty doomed. Yeah, we'll see. The af it's called the after meme regret. You know, that's what it is. Yeah, but uh, one of the, the guy who owns the bar in my hometown, it's a childhood friend of mine. We went to school together as kids and he has a nice commander night every Wednesday night. Yeah, yeah. Shadowborn Apostle can be good. Yeah, it can. I, I, that deck can be strong. I'm currently playing, uh, we have what? Mono Green Eldrazi. So we have Azusa, Lost But Seeking. So it's like a hard ramp deck to get Eldrazi out. Um, no like fast mana, like we don't run Ancient Tombs. And that's kind of where like our group kind of draws the line is like fat, super fast mana. Like we'll run Soul Rings, but we don't run like the Moxes and the Jeweled Lotus and things like that. Those are the ones that we uh, we skip out on. Um, yeah, I have a Mono Green Eldrazi deck with Azusa. I have a Super Friends with Commodore Guff. My favorite deck is my mono black deck. This is my most competitive deck. It's uh, a Kalidus deck. And it's it's basically a uh, a removal tribal. So we have probably like 15 to 17 removal spells with like 8 to 10 board wipes. And then just like from there we win with like, uh, you know, uh, Citadel of Bolas and uh, Gate, uh, what is it called? The uh, Grey Merchant of Asphodel and Exsanguinate and Torment of Hailfire, like with big mana. It's It's like the most, that's my strongest deck for sure. Winota? Oh, yeah. Well, Winota is, like, really, really strong. Winota is, like, top tier. Yeah, strong, strong commander for sure. All right. Cool, thank you. Soul Ring is... Yeah, Soul Ring's very strong. Uh, you know, Soul Ring's a good card. It's it's Those those fast mana cards are just insane in general. Subatai and House Cat still not done yet. All right, all right. Yeah, the Mono Black deck is my, my uh, no fun deck. And I'll show you why it's really good. It's super underrated. People don't really run Kalidus, but I, I've never run into another player using him. But I think he is just so incredibly underrated. And I'll show you why. So um, here he is, right? People see him. They're not afraid of him, right? Because he's not like some like commander that comes in and just like wins the game. But basically, whenever a non-token creature and opponent controls dies, it exiles them instead, which number one will shut down most graveyard decks. So he himself will help handle graveyard decks pretty well. Number two though, when said creature gets exiled, you get a 2-2 zombie token. Plus you get a sack outlet on a stick, which is nice, but really that's the whole thing. So it's a removal tribal deck. Now, normally the downside of removal spells and magic is that, you know, it's a four player game and, and you'll remove like one creature, right? So you're not necessarily getting a ton of value out of it, but what you do is you you remove the, um, when you're killing creatures with spot removal, you're getting zombies. And when you're using edicts that make every player sacrifice a creature, you're getting three zombies. So if I cast like a uh, Fleshbag Marauder, I'm boom, I got three zombies. It's super good value. We got six power on the board and killed three enemy creatures. Another really good one is if I have Kalidus out and I use a board wipe, like a damnation, kill like 15 creatures, Whatever. I get 15 zombies, the board's wiped, and I'm like in a huge power play position. He is super, super underrated, I'm telling you. Like, I think he's one of the, the biggest kind of like going under the radar uh, mono black commanders. Yeah, very good. Uh, anyways, there's my rants. 
little fun fact. This this was originally when I first started doing YouTube. I, I was thinking about doing having it be a magic channel, but yeah, it's um it's fun. Yeah, it doesn't completely shut down graveyard decks. It helps you against them though. Yeah, it helps you against them. All right, so it looks like everybody's finished. And let's advance the Swiss and have me face Professor Pwn once more in the deep. Yes. Okay. Oh, we're playing Icarus. Isn't Icarus like two wins or something? Let's see. No, he's just one win. Shit, okay. So it begins. Pwn and I duking it out. Hell yeah. It's not, it's not him. <laughs> we're up. I don't know what my opponent's playing now, but... Should be something fun. Should be something fun. Did you ever play Hearthstone? Um, yeah, I played a lot. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, my opponent's trying to get in the game now. All right, so the map is going to be the Lost Isle Colony. So Icarus, you're up. Lost, is it Isle? Easter, yeah, it's Eastern Isle is what it's supposed to be. Uh, let me let me let everybody know. Uh, map is supposed to be. Map is Eastern Isle Colony. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we had the we had the wrong name on the website, so got to clear that one up. Hearth, I loved Hearthstone in the beginning. It was it was very fun. I uh, I had a great time with that. All right. Oh, we got Slanesh versus Chorfs. Okay, I'll I'll go. I'll try. I'll try some good stuff this game. Yeah, I'm not gonna like meme. I, I'll try and end on a on a positive dub here, and see how that all unfolds. Okay, so the Lord choices are interesting here. Probably the Bale Taurus man is pretty good because they can't really do a whole lot against them. Um, and Slanesh spam spells are really hard too. Lord Metal is never bad. Lore of Death isn't bad. You can just Buna, spam Buna down on like, you know, the, the big boys. Yeah, I'll go try hard for you guys. I'm sorry. I know the memeing is fun to watch, but it also can be frustrating. I know there's a lot of people here who want to learn. So uh, let's let's get let's get down to the business on that. All right. So what can Slanesh bring that's big and scary? I don't know if they can do a whole lot in that regard. The Bale Taurus characters are cool. Definitely cool. And uh, Bull Centaur renders as another support piece. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. All right. So let's grab you guys. Yeah, the stats on them aren't bad. What about these? What is Slanesh going to be doing? They're going to be dropping the whips and stuff. Yeah, it's mainly going to be that. Okay. Trying, trying something that's certainly unorthodox, but it could be, in theory, pretty good. And uh, do we want any sort of artillery against these bad boys? I don't know if we need it. Let's cut that, save some dough. So now we have a thousand gold to work with. And on the back objective, hmm. Yeah, I'm excited for the new magic sets. I've just recently gotten back into it. It's, um, oh, man, magic is just, a, it's a great game. It's the best part about magic though, is playing with friends like commander groups. Like, standard magic doesn't really tickle my pickle. You know, it kind of devolves into this really, like... I came back and was, like, you're thinking about playing standard again. And I, I looked at this, like... I was looking at, like, not standard, but some of the more recent formats. And seeing, like, Sheldred and the One Ring. And I was like, oh, God, that does not look like it's fun to play. So, basically, we scrapped that idea. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. Probably not a bad idea. Yeah, never want to leave home without the Hobo Goblins. That's for sure. And blunderbusses in this matchup. What are the applications they have? Not too many, I don't think. I don't think they have too many applications. I always wonder how like the Infernal Guard would trade against some of the uh, some of this Lanesh stuff, but I feel like it's not going to be good. Yeah, Commander is is magical though. It's it's a really really fun format. It's uh, great fun. All right, so if only this guy were not so expensive. Goodness gracious. Magma cannons are cool. Death Reeks are still pretty respectable. They do good damage against the uh, Slanesh uh, spam. So 2,500 is all we got left here. You guys are rocking that. The magic damage is certainly not terrible. Okay, we got you. And then we can go ahead and slap the base here. Like, how does Slanesh even deal with Skullcrackers and, like, those type of things? They probably just chase them around, I would wager. 
Yeah, they probably just give him the, the old razzle-dazzle. Okay, and then we can get you. And as far as reinforcements go, probably some of these. Um, it wouldn't be a terrible idea to maybe get one unit of those. Yeah, Seekers are probably good here. Like Seekers is Slanesh, just like Fast and Furious. I bet you they, they cause some havoc. I feel like I get like stuck into these very we weird elite like skewed builds when I play these guys. What do we even need the uh, Bull Centaur Renders for, the anti-large? I guess he could come in with something big and that would be a problem for us for sure. Artillery spam like a Hell Cannon could even be respectable in this map, but Hell Cannons I feel uh, can be compromised a little bit too easily for my likings. Um, all right, one, two. These guys are up on there, chilling. Let's get this. And then we can slap you in there too. Other Chowie troopers that we want. Okay, Icarus looks like they DC'd, so a good time to reset right now. Let me check. All right. Yeah, I got it. Thank you, Pone, for the update there. Oh, the last unit here is a Trixie Hobbit. Let me send it to him. Hopefully he's not DCing too hard today here. Can rejoin. Uh, power grab is not banned today. It's it's something I've been really I've been wanting to. I mean, tournament. It's up to tournament hosts if they want to ban power grab. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it is a really lame thing though. Like power grab overall. It's but it's gonna get fixed. It's gonna get fixed. I that is one thing I I do believe is actually gonna get fixed. Uh, the blunderbusses for a little bit of DACA certainly isn't bad. We have a big fighter character who can probably handle himself on big targets. Um, plenty of that. The bull center renders don't even seem that like that good here. The immortals, on the other hand, could be rad. I don't know about them. Undying will. Oh, so cool. So cool. Yeah, CA really did miss the mark on uh, on the old chaos dwarves. They're such a cool faction, but just something about their design is weird. Pone, are you playing the rats this game? You playing this game and I see you making little rat faces in chat. Let's see. So we got Nocturne versus Subutai, Pink versus Ghoul, Housecat versus Prepare for the Bear. Oh, Pone's playing the corn player. He's playing Jeff Bob. All right, that's rad. He's playing the dreaded Jeff Bob. And uh, what do we got? All right, handful of players here. Icarus has what? Uh, only one win, so yeah. We'll see if he can whip this out here. Power grab is... Uh, yeah, it's it's a Skaven mechanic. It's on the Chieftain. So when people unsummon a, a Skaven Lord, it gives the entire army leadership, which is not how it's intended to work. And I know that if anybody... I've had people try and argue with me in the past, but I, I have legitimate confirmation from CA that they consider it an exploit. And like, it's not... It's not like working as intended. Um, but yeah, it's... It's... Um, it's... Yeah. It's a tricky one to police. Overall, it's gone by for so long. It's like one of those things that kind of got grandfathered in. But yeah, I'm excited to see what Skaven might look like after that changes. Yeah, Vampire Counts versus Corn is a fun one. I think Vampire Counts should be slightly favored in that. Um, but yeah, it depends. All right. Here we go. It is go time. Hey, I'm sorry you had some bad news, Talon. We'll try and we'll try and make it fun for you. So this is a little bit more in line with, I think, like a good Chowie build. We got the double train. We have the Death Freak, which is gonna sit like right here and just shoot fat rockets. Um, we're going to push up here with an elite core of units, which on a choke point map I think are pretty good. And he's just going to grab our back one. How dare you, Cody? Dude, Cody in chat saying I'm going to get wrecked. I feel personally betrayed. You just wait. Yeah, I'm probably going to start banning power grab just simply because I just found that information out. So The blocker's up. Oh my god, here we go. How dare you, dude? The betrayal. You guys, I should leave the blocker for you doubting me like this. Okay, so we got the old Goblin Labors on this side. Looking good. And let's uh, move up. All right. Ooh, Demonettes. I, like, I respect that. Yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking would happen. Wow, this is a super different build. Oh, yeah, I love it. So clearly they were expecting the train spam. And uh, let's get the Death Shrieker to start shooting at... Um, you know, for starters, it can just go after the Demonettes. 
I do have the Blasting Charges of Doom, and the trains are still going to be a problem. Baelator's character in Insane Duelist, he can definitely take on quite a bit. So um, we're going to park you right here, and let's start shooting at... Um, you can get the Princes of Perfection there. That's probably the target they'll least expect. So callouts need to be Fireborn. Fireborn will be very good here. So, And plus, these uh, Elite Chawi, they do magic damage. So the idea is they'll be pretty good there. We do have the Double Cultist moving up. Very interesting builds. Very interesting, this game. All right, so let's switch you onto here. You can go there. Um, trying to hit your boy up in the sky is going to be tough, Azazel. We're going to send the trains in and uh, cut the blasting charges offline for now. And cool. So the trains are going to push those things back, I think. We did miss. Um, could start shooting at Azazel here with the heat-seeking rockets of doom. Matter of fact, spirit leeching him doesn't feel bad to me at all. He's pretty squishy in general, so just wearing him down will feel nice. Hey, we had the wrong target mode on. All right. So we're here. Let's get some Fireborn coming out. Nobody expects the Fireborn. Oh, no. Hopefully he doesn't disconnect or something. That would be really a shame. Really would be a shame. So the trains are going to definitely be able to run over some of these, uh, these, these demons over here. And we got the Fireborn rushing up to help out. So we're going to leave one here. And we're just going to run away with you in the meantime. Azazel gets popped in the face again. He did pop Demon Blade. It's a little bit scary. Yeah, so we probably are going to want to hustle and run. And you guys need to just come over here. Like, full full, full speed ahead. Full speed ahead. Actually, yeah, one of you needs to stay there. All right. All right. So let's get you Fireborn going here. Azazel's getting tagged with rockets, and we can Spirit Leech him again. And the train, hopefully, will be able to do some work running over the, some of those. Fireborn have arrived, and uh, so far, not bad. Not bad at all. Azazel's already down to half health. Classic, classic Azazel. And um, let's switch the Death Shrieker onto these, which should be pretty good. All right, so pulling back. Let's do this. Get you guys in here. Azazel's still going to get hunted, and let's make sure we get the Blasting Charges here. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep Spirit Leeching that bad boy. All right, so keep going there. How are we looking down on the ground? Ooh, we got the Blasting Charges on the Demonettes. Nice, that's what I'm talking about. So keep hunting that man down. These guys can force Blasting Charge here. On the other side, it's a little bit dicier. Um, we do have some back pressure coming onto our unit here, which um, we can probably go ahead and blunderbuss them. So we're going to come up and blunderbuss these these things. Azazel is pretty close to death, so we're going to Spirit Leech him again, and then we're going to pull you back. And hopefully the train is going to be able to do some work there. We do take out one Demonette unit. We are pretty well ahead on value. I think it's going okay. Yeah, so the blunderbusses go here, and then what we do on top of that is we call in a Hobo Goblin, we go over the top, and we get like a little surrounding charge, basically, and see what happens there. Alright, Azazel is basically on death's bed. Let's come kill these cultists, actually. I feel like that's going to be prudent here. Really good maneuverability, though. They're, they're definitely doing some nastiness on us. Alright, so the blunderbusses of Doom. Let's do this. We need a rear charge in. And, uh, yeah, pull back, because obviously they're watching us here. Keep retreating, and we're trying to kill these characters here on the ground if we can. See if we can get it. That fight's going well. This one's a little bit messy, so I think we got to pull back and maintain our value here. Yeah, pull this back too, and uh, from here we can do another counter punch and do this. And all right, surround and surround, and let's get the fireborn back here to clear these out. So we have this objective on lock. Yeah, Zazel gets unsummoned, which is you know I'm I'm totally fine with that. That's great. Call in the train. And this cultist should be shattered. Outstanding. All right. So, so far, so good. I think we're going to win this game. I, I don't know. I could be wrong, but I, I'm starting to feel confident. Some of the trading has uh, gotten much, much better here. Yeah, this entire backfield being peeled is, is very strong. And the big man is here. He's going to start spirit leeching down the next big target, which is going to be you. And we have our elite fireborn here. Let's get them on the cultists. And the Kadai have done it. All right. So now we can start moving up. Let's get the Death Shriek Rocket Launcher back online to start shooting at the Soul Grinder. Great. And uh, let's move you up. Get some more Hobo Goblins to chase down these Skirmishers. These guys need to be unsummoned. And the train should eventually finish off that Cultist. I don't know how long it's going to take. 100 years or so, but we'll get there at some point or other. Wait for you guys. Get the Blunderbusters to keep moving up. And we need to get some... As much as I hate to call in regular Chowie infantry, it's I need cap weight. So we're going to move you guys up here. I like this build from Icarus, though. It's pretty rad. It's um, definitely tailored to deal with the uh, the Chowee uh, train spam. It's got a lot of anti-large, the anti-large soul grinder, you know, good things. 
All right, so just waiting for the troops to get in position. Let's go over here. Although he does have those Seekers back there, which are kind of evil cackling at me. He's going to rampage my blunderbusses. Good call. It's only a matter of time, though, before we uh, get the Soul Grinder down. When that thing goes, that's going to be pretty big. What are these, Seekers? Those are Seekers. All right, so we need to get the remnants of our Fireborn on them. Keep running you guys back. Keep moving up here. We got the Spirit Leech of Doom. And, yeah, those Furies need to be dealt with, too. So we're going to keep you guys there to deal with them. Slanesh, like, Helm's deeping on this point pretty hard, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, losing this train here is bad. That's bad news, Bears. All right. Definitely can't afford that. All right, so charge here. Break those guys. Call it another Chowie infantry. And uh, hopefully we can just get some staying power up here on the point. Back you go. Let's not get caught here. Let's move up on the point here. Jump on the Princes of Perfection. And we don't want to get our Lord caught and killed. That's like the one thing we're really looking out for here. Is the Haggard Blunder. So you guys move in. And now that we have some infantry support, I'm feeling a little bit better. Let's go ahead and do the Bale Taurus Breath Attack here. And the Death Shriek can uh, now get back online and hopefully finish off the big man. Alright, so Spirit Leech. There we go. Let's have you guys engage here. The train's moving back in, and it looks like the big man's going down now. So we can we can move in and party a little bit. Let's get the uh, the dread train to his back objective and start threatening a little bit of a cap. And yeah, unfortunately, it's obstructed right now. So is there any other targets we want to shoot at? Fiends of oh no, he managed to get away there. Okay. So let's move those guys up. Oh, they did. Nice, darling. Oh, we'll check it out in a bit. So keeping them there, it's a bit of a deterrent. The tra the Chad Chowie infantry trying to fight. Let's have you guys get down here. Oh, did he fascinate those guys? Oh, he did. Wow. Who would have thought the Fireborn would be like our go-to here, right? They were just solid. All right. More Chowie troopers on the way. The train is going to go party here. And it looks like the Soul Grinder of Slanesh is going to die. All right. You guys come under. Yep. Fascination's worn off. The Train of Doom is going to uh, battle the Seekers. But we're going to call a little help in. We're going to call some, uh, some units to move up there and bump and grind. All right, big man. Come on, carry the game. Carry it. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Unsummons. Need to do a little bit of housekeeping. And now we have the single fire rocket, which, um, where do we shoot it at? Fiends of Slanesh, probably. Yeah. Yes. You guys doubted the Chowies are. And here they are. The terrors of the old world. The most meta of meta. What are these? These are exalted demonets? Those are basic ones. All right, so you head across this way. You guys go here. Let's get you guys moving up this way. Yes, good, Anakin, good. This train's going to probably die here, unfortunately. The, what's great about the Infernal Iron Sworn is they do magic damage, so they're just going to karate chop these demons. All right, let's do this. I mean, we went on two here. Let's pull this train back, see if we can deny a little bit of space there. Okay, let's move in. So we could definitely just hunker down on two objectives. Like, that's very, very possible, too. We don't need to get greedy or anything. As a matter of fact, let's just force Slanesh to come to us. And uh, move these blasting charges here. Keep you guys here. Get this train back. And keep this train rolling, rolling, rolling. Fascinates me off the objective. That's pretty cheeky. I respect that. Fireborn are back for round 10. Very good against the demons. Seekers charging into my boys. And, uh, yeah. Just hit him with the uh, big man. Yeah, let's do it. Train is still trying to get over here, too, this one. It's a little bit trapped up, but let's give it the uh, all-hands-on-deck ability. So we definitely went on two points here. Nice uh, pop on the train. Let's see if the blasting charges can hit that thing. Our elite chorfs need to hold here. We don't have reinforcements super close. Um, let's go after the fiends again. Keep you guys in. Big Chowie Master. Oh, is that going to friendly fire us a little too hard? Oh, it's probably better. Hit the enemy units well, too. All right, so the blasting charges hit home. Let's move one of you guys over, get you back. And it's mainly just demons here, all of which um, our boys should be good against, especially if we call in some hobo goblins for support. Okay, so the Fireborn have engaged. You've engaged here. Let's get the train pulling in and see if we can do it. And the rocket is now in single fire mode. Let's move you guys up to here to ninja that point, leaving you back there. And I think that split push will work well. The Kadai Fireborn themselves also take a lot of damage from demons because they themselves are demons, so it's kind of like a bit of a party. Get the train going after the demonettes, pull you guys in. And I think that's going to be the end of the game. This is the Eastern Isle Colony. Yeah, Eastern Isle Colony. 
Really expecting Slanesh Armor Spam. All right, Spirit Leech, those, those fiends who've been uh, an absolute menace this entire game. GG! Yeah, we still got it! Yeah, let's go! <laughs> the Chowie! They, they, they got it, sort of. That was a fun game, though. And Slanesh is a good faction. They're sitting around 50% win right now. They're solid. So that's a, that's a good win for the Chowie. That's a good one. All right, so let's report that. I'm happy to go out with that game. That was nice. That was a that was an, a good one to go out with, go out on there. All right. Oh, looks like Jeff Bob got the dub against Old Pone Dog. Oh no, killing my tiebreaker there, Smalls. Okay, let's do this. Chaos Dwarfs. And who are we playing against? We are playing against these guys. All right. Perfect, Slanesh. Slanesh's glory was not enough today. Well played, Icarus. It was a fun game, man. All right, so yes, that looks good. Yeah, honestly, that Slanesh build wasn't bad. The map wasn't great for Slanesh, though. It was like a pretty pretty close quarters map there, so that was, that was a little hard. Top four is looking pretty set in stone, uh, unless like people dropped for some reason, which um, I don't think is going to be the case. Yeah, I like that map. It's really fun. It's a it's a fun one. Yeah, Corn actually ended up winning. You guys have no idea some stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely, Pwn. Mm hmm. Yes. Yeah, Anna's always doing amazing art, but then when I whenever I ask to share it, she's like, no, <laughs> no. Would the Chorps be better in multiplayer campaign if they could get some campaign armor? Oh, I mean, yeah. I mean, campaign is the campaign is just wild. It's like you know the amount of like stuff. Yeah, campaign balance is, is basically not like bouncing campaign is should not be like yeah it's it's just the players can make whatever they're playing op. I mean there are a couple of unique campaigns which I guess are pretty weak overall, but yeah, that was a fun game, man. The big character did good. He he beat the brakes off of Zazel though, man. And the Death Freak got eighteen hundred. The Elite Chorf Infantry didn't do bad. Um, Fireborn did okay. Blunderbusses were cute. Didn't get a chance to use everything here. He brought Scarbrand and the Blood Brute. I didn't account for that. Oh yeah, that, that can be hard for vampire counts. Yeah, dealing with those big monsters. Did you have um? Did you have a bunch of uh, what's it called? Uh, let's see here. <laughs> My opponent's like, I was gonna bring Stink Ball. Those like, that yeah, definitely would have been stronger. Yeah, it would have been much harder to deal with. Azazel is pretty. He's always a bit of a meme. He's I don't know why. He's just too squishy. He dies too easily. You know. All right, guys, prepare yourselves for the top four. Stand by. Um, let's see what we got. Yeah, corn. Corn is not doing as badly this patch. They're they're the third lowest faction. The worst factions in order, according to stats, are vampire counts, chaos dwarves, and corn. Um, yeah. Pwn says I had four cryptors and spears and spirit leech fam, that, and that was it. Ah, oh, got it. Yeah, that's hard. That's hard. Yeah, Scarbrand and the Blood Brute can definitely get some work done, but were you able to tarp at the objectives or did he just call in like elite corn infantry to take you off the side points? Okay, let me see. Checking on the tournament. Thank you guys all for joining. By the way, have you guys seen the new Bretonian stuff? That looks awesome. Looks absolutely awesome. A couple games to finish. We got Subutai and Noctrum, uh, Bretonia versus Gaven, and then we have Chaos Dwarves versus uh, Zinch actually being played, which is cool. Um, but those games should be wrapping up soon. Looking at the top four right now, we have uh, Housecat, Noctrum, Subutai, and Ghoul. But again, these last couple of games here will heavily determine who is going to be the Dark Lord. So within a minute, we should be fine. You guys are trying to... Yeah, we're, we're having fun today. We're having fun. I, I kind of wanted to play Vampire Counts, but the thing is, when you look at Vampire Counts, they, um, they, just, they don't have like a lot of uh, good matchups, you know? Looking at Count Chocula here. Let's see. So I guess these matchups are okay for them, according to the stats. We have um, Vampire Coast. Yeah, that makes sense. Slanesh. I can see that. Slanesh doesn't really have the, the range for Monstrous Presence to fight them. Greenskins. That's actually a bit of an interesting niche for Vampire Counts, maybe, because they, they can absorb the Greenskin wand and do pretty well for themselves. Yeah, they're just not being played much either. Like, there's not a lot of good data. Like, you can't extrapolate much, like, from one, two games being played. We don't know the skill level of those players, right? 
Yeah, but they're clearly getting crushed by Warriors of Chaos, and that's because of the Mutalith Vortex Beast. Um, Kislev, they have no chance against Kislev. Kislev Infantry will beat them in melee, and their shooting is just top tier with nets. Kislev is just stupid OP. It really bums me out, man, that like CA is so bad at balance, and we end up with shit like this. Because it has so much potential. It has so much potential. Yeah, we got a lot of it. But to be completely fair in their defense, um, yeah, 23 factions is a lot, or 24 factions is a lot. See some wood elves? We did have some elves in the tournament. I think Catholic played them, and then he maybe dropped. Yeah. Maybe he did. All right, perfect. Wood elves versus ogres? I mean, ogres definitely need some big nerfs, for sure. They need some big nerfs. If I brought a similar build to our game two game, you would have been fine. Yeah, it's it's always hard landing on the right build. It, it definitely is. Okay, so thank you guys for your patience. We'll be getting started soon, hopefully. Checking here, one person. Of course, it's old Subutai. Taking a million years. Million years in his game. Housecat of War has qualified with three wins. So Housecat did drop a game somewhere in the tournament. Oh, he dropped one to Subutai, so rats, yeah. Power grab rats are pretty cheesy. But that's what we're going to see today, probably, from the Skaven. Makes sense that the rats would be cheesy, though, doesn't it? Are you the Dark Lord? Certainly not of the Chaos Dwarves. Um, I would say the best Chaos Dwarf player is Pink. Um, you've seen Pink around. Pink has been, like, exclusively playing only Chaos Dwarves, like, since this entire season. Um, Legend has it. He's still making his build. I know. By the way, we just updated the old Hall of Fame on Total Taverns. You can see the... Um, one of the main reasons for this website is kind of a, a history of, of Total War Competitive, right? So we have the season championships, right? So you can see the world championships, all the different seasons. Here's last season. We got Houseplant winning there. You can see the other players and different various events we have, like Summer Championships, Faction Wars. I'll, I, I do need to get back to Faction War. My my will to do it got crushed a little bit with like some of the, the power creep stuff that we've gotten. I'm kind of like, I don't want to have a Faction War and then just like heavily like, yeah, it's just... So I don't know. Hopefully we can get back to that eventually. But like the current like balance is like really, yeah, I, it's made me disinterested in having that kind of an event. But and you can go back to Warhammer Two if you want. Check out the days of old. Yes, yes, good times. A lot of Felcon. A little bit of Hadri's action here. Some Void Lols cackling in the shadows towards the end. I think Void Lols won the. Um, was Void Lols and Evenstar the same person? No, Evenstar was Ark in the Black in disguise. Yeah, that's what it was. There was there was a couple of players who were just like scheming in the shadows. Yeah, good times. Yeah, Total Taverns are. Um, yeah, you like tourney drama? Yeah, it's great. It's great. Tourney drama is not fun when you're the one doing the rules and having to deal with players complaining. It's it's certainly not fun. That's why I, one of the big reasons I prefer Dom mode. Because you very rarely have to deal with that kind of stuff. All right, top four is here, baby. Let's get it. So we got Nocturne, Ghoul Baby, House Cat, and Supachai. Damn, I was actually pretty close to top four, even with two wins, two losses. Okay, so let's advance to top four. Here we go. Top four is being advanced. So thank you, guys. It is go time. We're going to jump into a match here in a second. Let's finalize this tournament here. And move across. All right. It's a shame that chorps are just like cheese. You know, it's like SE cheese. Yeah, the core units are just so bad. I've never played the factory games. Yeah, the yeah, factory. No, I haven't. Were Moffat and Void Laws the same person? Uh, yes, Moffat and Void Laws were the same person, and Ark and the Black and Even Star were the same person. Those were the big. Those were the big. So the Warhammer Two, the biggest tournament in all of Warhammer Two, was won by Even Star, who was a Smurf for Ark and the Black, who was like one of the more notorious players, one of the best players for sure, but um, notorious <laughs> to say the least. All right, so we got Ghoul versus Subutai and Noctrum versus House Cat of War. So maps are up. Let me tag the players. So we got Ghoul, uh, Ghoul versus Subutai, and then we have Noctrum versus House Cat. All right, let's get it. Let's go on and get it. So what do we got here? So what do we want to watch, guys? I'm going to put it to a vote, um, and you guys can decide. We're going to do a quick poll here, uh, game. And do we want to watch Skaven versus Zinch, or do we want to watch Bretonia versus um, Chaos? Those are our two options here in the top four of today's single faction tournament. So let me know. 
We'll jam whatever you're interested in. All right, all right. Imagine being so good that you could be number one or two. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's not like if you get, if you went to Age of Empires 4 and if you look at the top ranked leaderboard players, it's usually the same player with multiple Smurf accounts. I think Smurfing is super degenerate, um, especially in games with quick, like leaderboard system. You know what I'm saying? Like in Age of Empires, Smurfing is, I think, super toxic in StarCraft. Like, I don't think they should allow people to have multiple accounts. It's, it's so stupid. You just get like these like these people you know who are either streaming or just want to meme around and you get these like conqueror players who come in and just stomp on new players building up these new accounts to entertain their streams or whatever and it's just like it's it's bs dude it's just like yeah it's stupid it's it's really toxic i would enjoy a 30 minute breather watching so stupid time make his bill <laughs> ca should contact you as a consultant i don't think they would do that yeah I don't think they would do that. I would be willing for sure. You know, if it, if it me if I could actually make some impactful change and like have my changes go through, but I feel like I would just get stonewalled and you know people would just not do it because yeah, it's it's tricky. Okay, so we're here. Wow, why are you guys doing this, dude? Fifty fifty. What is this? What is this stuff, dude? Come on, you guys need to tilt the vote one way or the other. You want Skaven versus Inch? It's kind of what it looks like right now. I'm going to give it another minute. Yeah, smurfing is awful. Thankfully, in this game, it's not a problem because nobody plays quick battles, like, seriously. So it's like you don't have to worry about it. Um, but yeah, in other games, RTS games, smurfing is super toxic. Super toxic. Well, you, what you see, you see a lot of streamers doing it. Like, like StarCraft and I don't know about Age of Empires as much, but... Like a, they'll, they'll make like a, you'll get like a top tier, like pro level player, right? They're like, they make a Smurf account and they just like, they just go in and they just make, they, they're basically abu abusing lower level players to make videos that are entertaining. Cause obviously these strategies and these memes wouldn't work against, um, now I have no problem with that, but why not just make lobbies with people, you know, or who are lower level instead of going on and bullying somebody who's trying to like climb ladder. See that I've always hated that. I've always hated that. Um, all right. Skaven versus Inch is going to be the play. Um, all right. Sabatai. Lobby, please. Casting ears. All right. So we're going to do Skaven versus Inch. And let's go here. Perfect, perfect. Smurfing in, in Age of Empires FFA games isn't as bad, though, but it's still, I don't like it. Because um, you need to know who you're up against. It's, it's part of FFA, it's part of the politics of it. Um, all right. So I think it's these guys. Okay, let's go. So Skaven versus Inch on the map is going to be, is it really a Ragnarok player again? No, it's Glade of the Everqueen. All right, so they need to switch their map. Map is Glade is map. Okay, perfect. Have they added a chat box? We don't, no, we do not have chat in this game. We do not. To be fair, some high-level lobbies are sweaty. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with lobbies, like in getting people of lesser skill to play in your multiplayer lobbies. There's nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. Uh, what's wrong is going into the rank system of a game where people are trying to improve and play people of equal skill in a competitive setting and just getting stomped out by like somebody who's smurfing. That, that to me, is the problem. But like, I have no problem with a high-level player making a lobby and crushing beginners who go in there on their own accord or like are invited, whatever, you know? In, in, a, in a casual lobby setting, but when it comes to ladder, it's, um, yeah, it's a, it's a thing. Imagine 1v1 voice chat. Oh my God. Well, I mean, anybody from my generation knows 1v1 voice chat. Romulan dog appears as the Skaven are being played. I love it. Um, I mean, my generation endured Xbox live chat. Like I remember the year would have been, oh God, 2004 even. Yeah, like early Xbox Live. We had those like janky little headsets. And some of the, the things I heard, some of the, the vulgar and, you know, offensive stuff. Oh man. I mean, like that, our generation was ex exposed to that stuff pretty quickly. Granted, this generation also gets exposed to the gnarly stuff from the internet. So it's just a, a different modality. Yeah, 100%. You ever thought of a 2v2 land battle tournament? Yeah, I've done those before. It's fun. Um, I would do a casual event like that, you know. COD lobbies. I Yeah, man, I'm trying to think of... Yeah, I have some vivid memories of those times. 
Ventrilo, yeah. Ventrilo chat was usually more contained, though, because it wasn't with complete strangers, unless you subjected yourself to that. Like, I had a Ventrilo server that we we raided in WoW on back in 2005 and six. I think it was 2006, maybe, or seven. It was somewhere around that time. And it was just me and my friends, so it wasn't too bad. Xbox Live was wild, though, man. Yeah. It was wild. Who uses TeamSpeak? Uh, so, let's see. For me, it was Ventrilo was the big one. Ventrilo was the big one in college. And then it, Skype was another one I used. And then, it, yeah, Skype was used for a long time. Like, just like for calls. Yeah. Those are, those are some good times. I know, Chaz, I know. We got a lot of, a lot of millennial, elder millennials here. Uh, Skaven versus Inch, this matchup, it's going to be Power Grab Cheese versus Zangor Swarm with Marauders. So you'll probably see like 500 Marauders with um, Zangors mixed in. And then potentially you'll see Marauder Horsemen killing Rat Ogres with their Javelins. And that's basically it. It's, it's a pretty simplistic matchup. But this is the semifinal here. This is the semifinal. Everybody knew your mom well in the early chat. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, AOL. I used AOL Instant Messenger. I remember that. Yeah. Nothing beats MySpace Top 8, though. ICQ, I had one of those, too. I played Ultima Online in the 1990s, and ICQ is how people communicated for that game, yeah. Um, MySpace, yeah, was, was probably the... MySpace was probably one of my favorite social media experiences. That was just uh, that was just magical, you know? And Tom is your first friend. You still use Skype? Yeah, Skype is, Skype is still useful, but di I like Discord. Discord's great. Like... Seeing how our communities have grown in Discord is awesome. Like every every day when I log on and see all these people playing Age of Empires and chatting with another another, it just brings me it brings me so much joy knowing that we have this like cool community, you know? Yeah, it's it's Discord's pretty great. I, I really like Discord. All right, firing it up, baby. Let's get it. Skaven versus the Zinchian forces. Wow, I totally No. He's going for a bounty. He's going for a blue scribe bounty. Guys, this is a total tavern bounty right here. He brought the blue scribes, which if he wins a semifinal game, which this is with the blue scribes, he will be earning the blue scribe avatar. Wow, look at that. Okay, guys, he's going the miracle mile here today. You guys tuned in for an absolute treat, absolute treat. So yeah, blues and pinks, basically archers for the demons with some marauders as well. Um, we have a herald who is just gonna be there for winds of magic to use the chromatic tomb. And then we have the blue scribes, which are obviously just going to be casting uh, some wild stuff. Yeah. Oh my God. This is this is nuts. This is nuts. And Supertize build is just basically as sweaty as you can possibly be. It's just using the um, the really really nasty unsummon to get the leadership on your army, and then using the uh, warlock engineer with a bunch of clan rats. It's it's basically standard. So Romulan dog in chat saying his first online game we use carrier pigeons. Yeah, yeah. That's, imagine playing a game of chess with a carrier pigeon. Like with somebody who lives, uh, you know, in the ancient times, to be pretty, pretty interesting. Now, Zinch is basically they're playing with a pretty substantial um, setback in terms of efficiency. Blue scribes are grossly overcosted. They should probably cost eight hundred gold less than they do. So, um, yeah, and I mean, there's going to be some RNG with the spells. We'll see what spells he ends up getting. But if he gets some really good spells, maybe. Like if he gets like a zombie summon and then like a clan rat summon, and he can shut down the enemy ranged, maybe. Maybe he could do it. I don't know. Oh, I remember the dial-up sound. I remember being on dial-up internet, and then somebody would call your house, and it would boot you off the internet. You know? Yeah. No, those those were the times. All right, guys. So taking a look at the Skaven build, let me break it down for you. Basically, Skaven like to go super wide in domination mode with clan rats, who for 300 gold have very good capture weight. And then what players do is they use the Grace Year of Plague, and uh, they trigger the power grab on the Chieftain, which gives eight leadership to the entire army. They unsummon him. It's it's definitely, um, in future tournaments, I just got, yeah, I, it's going to be banned in future tournaments probably. Um, but yeah, for now it's, uh, you know, obviously I didn't say anything before this event. I just found out today that, you know, it's like officially like, you know, an exploit or whatever. So now I have some justification. Rat Ogres in the back, Gisales as well. So the Gisales going to be parking up on the hill and they're great. They do good damage. Natty Bubos have been a staple for Skaven multiplayer for a long time. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So it's just Clan Rats with... Miscellaneous weapons teams. Um, I believe we did see avalanche mortars in the trees as well. 
So we do have the avalanche mortars, which are really good. I mean, they can wreck Zangors, uh, any infantry unit. They can just pound into oblivion. Now, looking at the forces of Ghouls, Ghouls one of our top-ranked tournament players this season. I believe he's number two or three on the leaderboard, or maybe even number one. He's up there pretty hard. So uh, he's coming in with a combination of blues and pinks. And, you know, pinks are good at shooting down rat ogres, and blues get in there and hold their own against clan rats and also have some nice shooting. Marauders are very good at killing clan rats, typically. And the Blue Scribes. So the Blue Scribes are one of the biggest meme units you can possibly encounter. These guys look super cool, but um, yeah, they're they're trying. He's he's trying to grab his little thing, and uh, I don't. I wish I could see the spells that he has, because I can't see the spells that are being rocked right here. Yeah, unfortunately not. So Zeech does have their little herald in the back. It's going to be a herald of change, and he's just popping the Winds of Magic item for power recharge and reserves, which is actually very clever. Just sit back there and spam that, and you know, then unsummon him when the time comes. Obviously, it's not going to be giving you any map-wide buffs or different things like that, so. The old demons preparing for a push. They're going to line up here and then push out like so and try and take objective three and two. The question is, how are they going to effectively shut down the weapons teams and what spells are the blue scribes going to get? That is the big question. I can't believe we got the blue scribes here. I cannot believe it. Yeah, these guys cost like 2,300 gold or something like that. He's got to be careful too, because Skaven do have the Warlock Engineer out here somewhere, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go ahead and see. Um, looking around the map, looking, looking, and looking in the trees here. I know Subutai has a Warlock Engineer as his caster, which means he could probably have Howling Warp Gale, uh, which could potentially kill the Blue Scribes very, very quickly here. So is it, this is a, this, there's a lot on the line for Subutai as well. You don't want to be the guy who loses to the Blue Scribes. If you lose to the Blue Scribes, man, you know, you're... You're going to have to live with that shame for all of eternity. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. <laughs> What's the over-under on a Van Geist Revenge? Blue Scribes need to write an update patch for CA. Minus 500 gold. Yeah, I know. Well, I actually I actually am going to be... In the notes that I've submitted to CA, um, just on the side, I've, I've suggested, you know, bringing them down like five, six, seven hundred gold. Like, they're an absolute meme unit. Like, even at that price point, they're just like, you never know what you're going to get. You could just get terrible spells all game, and Zinch needs good magic to win. Um, so yeah, they're really, really bad. All right, rat Ogres and Rat Ogres here in the back. Clan Rats chilling in the distance. And up in the sky, we have the Blue Scribes. The Blue Scribes are cackling here and uh, just hiding behind the pillar. Pretty funny. They're just like holding position here. Look, they, they know how this battle's going to end already. They're, of course, being agents of Zinch. Oh, they're so cool. Look at that. All the papers flying everywhere. Oh, that's great, man. That's great. I'm sure chat wants the blue scribes to win. It's literally like a, a turbo sweaty degenerate Skaven build versus versus very, very interesting Zinch build. Um, but the Zinch build aside from the blue scribes is very respectable too. And Ghouls is a very good player, but so is Subutai. Subutai is an incredibly strong player too. So we'll have to see how this all goes. Pink Horror's getting up and they're going to start teeing off on some of the clan rats here. In the back, we got the avalanche mortars popping out. Now they are going to eviscerate the Zinch army. The Blue Scribes need to get over there ASAP and find a way to deal with them with some magic. They're going to have to pull something out of the old bag of tricks because this is going to be bad. Avalanche mortars hit so hard. Oh, God. Brutal damage. Immediately nuking these Zangors down and just doing a ton of work. But some of the pinks do get in position and are able to return fire on the Avalanche mortars. We do also see Chaos Furies flying overhead and they're probably going to be sitting on top. Subutai does have some Poison Wind Globes hiding in the bushes and some Clan Rat Spears. But Zinch might find a way to actually get this objective here out of the gates. And now the Chaos Furies are thinking about going for it, but they're going to get melted most likely. Yeah, the Chaos Furies do not have very good leadership. They do get on top of the uh, Avalanche Mortars, but where are the Blue Scribes and what are they doing? Uh, the Blue Scribes appear to be sitting here. I don't know if they're actually casting any spells. Uh, all I really care about this game are the Blue Scribes. That's what, that's what you guys are here for. So more firepower here. The Pink Horrors getting in range of the Gisales is very cost effective. And now it looks like the Blue Scribes are heading over this way. And what do we get here? Um, I don't see any magic being used. Oh, okay. We had a uh, Blue Fire go down. Or a Pink Fire, actually, on the Night Runners there, which did some considerable damage. As far as value goes, relatively even at this point. Another Fury unit is going to be sent after the Avalanche Mortars. And now the Blue Scribes are going to be circling around the back. So here they come. Going to be eyeing the prize. Fury is going to be descending here. But Subutai doing a very good job guarding them using the... Oh, my God. What is this spell? Okay. Blue Scribes going to be doing something. Here it goes. What spell is this? We don't know. Oh, Talons of the Night from Grand Cathay. And that's going to get the dogs too. No, Subutai runs the doggos in. And that means the Wolf Rats are going to get annihilated. Okay, so the Grand Cathay magic from the Blue Scribes might be able to finish them off. I don't know. It didn't seem to do that much against the Avalanche Mortars. It certainly punished the uh, Wolf Rats and broke them. And they're going to be running off the map. But 
Aside from that, the value trading is actually very even, and objective here is owned by uh, the Zinchian forces. Back objective owned by Zinch as well. The hordes of clan rats going to be surging forward, but Zinch does have a nice concave where their pinks and blues are melting these rat ogres that are trying to advance. Meanwhile, we get more marauders heading up, and poison wing globeteers now on their way in, and the blue scribes are where? Uh, that's pretty much the only thing we care about this game, right? Looks like they cast something in the back. Some sort of witchcraft going down, and oh, he tried to use Searing Doom from the Lore of Metal. And now the Zinch army ability is going to be called in on the Avalanche Mortars. You basically just have to use everything in your power to try and shut them down. And that might actually shut them down. We'll have to see. On the backside here, we do see the Blue Scribes chasing down the Natty Bubo Sharpshooters in melee, which is pretty hilarious. Zinch army ability does hit home, and the Avalanche Mortars are still confident despite having only seven models, which is just ludicrous. Usually you'd think the Skaven would fold up a little bit easier. But Marauders pushing back. Objective going to be taken back by the Skaven. And it looks like the Rats have been able to effectively push back many of these units here. And on the other side, it looks like Zinch holding on to their home objective. No threats on the Rats' home objective. Some Furies down here against these Natty Bubos would be very strong, but really Zinch has been having problems shutting down the Avalanche Mortars. However, they haven't paid for themselves yet, so that's, uh, I suppose, not the worst thing in the world. The Pinks going to get in position to drop some shots on them, but good shot from Subutai does bring down the shields of those Pinks. Going to be some nasty, nasty warfare as more Jagos are being called out. And now there's going to be some sort of spell going down from the Blue Scribes. It's going to be an Amber Spear! Oh god, the Ember Spear, it's so janky. Pink's still trying to shoot. Doggo's going to be circling around the side and certainly causing some pressure. Blue Scribes probably have to get in a melee now against those, I think, to try and make a difference. Zinch is falling pretty far behind in value. That's what happens when you give your opponent 2,300 gold for free with the Blue Scribes. Uh, obviously, you're going to be paying the price. And he does get in. They are shaken now. Avalanche Mortars. Is Zinch going to have any way of getting back in this game, though? I don't think so. They didn't have that good of a front line. It was mostly Blues and Pinks, which Clan Rats actually can hold their own against pretty well. But on the backside, we do get the Grand Cathay Breath Attack spell. It's really terrible against armor. A bit of a miscast there from Ghouls. It should have been cast on the Skaven Slaves and the Dogs back here. But now the Blue Scribes are going to get munched on. Unless they pull out some really big Vortex magic from their Bag of Tricks. Uh, I suspect that we are going to be seeing the end of the Blue Scribes here. And Subutai likely advancing to the Grand Finals. Um, Alright, what spell is this? What the hell is this magic? What is that? Okay, the Blue Scribes are dying. They have a really cool death animation. So let's watch this. But they're getting nibbled down. And uh, that's going to be it. I think they get pulled back to the warp by, like, uh, like a big demon or something. Let's go ahead and check. Okay, so here they are. What's going on here? Are they going to fall? Oh, oh, that's so cool. That's, this is, a, that's, so, that's so rad. Oh, my God. I that game was worth it just for that alone. Just for that alone. And to be completely honest, I think Subutai would have won this game without power grab also. He would have found a way. Um, the blue scribes were extremely ineffective. And also, he did a really good job keeping those Avalanche Mortars alive, and um, that was basically it. So, I wouldn't be surprised to see a tap out from Zinch. They're down by, you know, 3,500 value with no healing on the table, so Ghouls is going to be withdrawing. Yeah. Isn't that a cool animation, though? That's really good. Hey, shout out to, big shout out to Ghouls. He already has a bunch of tournament wins, so I think he's happy to risk a tournament to try for the beams, you know? It's like when you get really rich, you're willing to just, like, take risks and, you know, well, I guess uh, not, that's not the best analogy, but, you know, he's already rich, so he doesn't care about losing a little bit of money, right? Is the idea, the analogy I was trying to make, but that that was really cool. That was that was fun. But, yeah, the Blue Scribes were pretty haggard. I mean, they, they almost paid for themselves, but it is, your, it is your caster as well. So, GG well played, and let's take a look at the brackets here and see how this is turning out. Um, so it will be the Skaven in the Grand Finals. Subutai looking for his first tournament win of the season. And if you take a look at the leaderboard, I believe Ghouls is currently a pretty high-ranked player on the board. It's loading here. Give it a second. Yeah, Ghouls is the number two ranked player. So he's he's happy to just... He already has won five tournaments this season. So he's chilling. Um, Subutai, I believe, is looking for his first tournament win. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. Should be fun. All right, all right. Hmm. Back we go. Let's see if the scores were reported. Yeah, Subutai with the win. And it is time. You know, you know when you get really rich and start buying Warhammer armies? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. Ghoul shout out, man. That was really fun. Thank you for giving us some Blue Scribes action. How would you actually make the Blue Scribes work, though, is the question. Um... Like, I'm trying to think how you would do that against Skaven. Um, so looking at Zinch. Zinch is a really cool faction. They're very fun. Yeah, I think I think more like more Marauders. 
more blues, and uh, then you got the blues. God, the blues scribes just put such a dent in your money. It's like 2300 is gross. Yeah, he had the right idea here. If you wanted to make a blue scribe build work. Um, do you bring a mutilith beast and just dive your opponent's backfield? Is that like some wild shit you do, or, or the double cock? You know, come out with the cockatrices? Oh, okay, looks like they're ready. 443. Oh, wow, they already, they already finished their game? No, they're still playing their match. Okay. Um, yeah, the other match still has not been reported yet. We go ahead and do that. Yeah, Nocturne versus Housecat. Bretonia versus Chaos is always a fun fight. Definitely cool. Definitely very cool. Um, the double birds. Yeah, I don't know. Without the healing from Kairos, it's a little bit precarious. Is the blue? You're you're just gambling so much with the blue scribes, you know. But you could like maybe mix in the Mutalith Beast and just have it like play the side and like chase down the mortars. <laughs> oh my god, this is so funny. We I'm, I would I would love to play. Okay, going to the Beastman, that makes sense. Ogre Kingdoms, not so much. Um, but yeah, maybe something like that. I don't know what else. Yeah, Screamers are obviously very good. You probably need to get a core of Screamers to dive with your Furies to shut down those weapons teams early. But it wasn't just the weapons teams. And you would just max out Zangors from there and, and call it a day. So, all right. Um, House Cat and Noctrim. Let me know when done. All right, cool. So I just tag them to let me know when they're done. And we're all good. We are all good indeed. Trent, have you considered expanding Total Tavern to the Age FFA? Yeah, I've thought about it. I thought about making a new, uh, but the problem is the coding for Total Tavern isn't able to do free for all. Um, I'd have to talk to my developer to see if that's something we could do. If that's something he can add, I would. I would make a. Um, if if I could get some people in the Discord who are really active in Age of Empires with me to help me manage the website, I could replicate Total Tavern and. Um, and have it be an Age of Empires like FFA website. You know, we could totally do that. Uh, which would be really fun. You know, have like tournaments and we could even have like, we could have any games in general. Um, like, so if anyone in our Discord is playing, they could register it for the website just to like keep records and all that. It would be cool to keep track of win rates too, potentially. Um, although, hmm, you'd have to also report, change the report system. Yeah, you'd have to change the way it reports all of that. I think that's possible. That's something I, I'd have to see what the um, I'd have to see what the web developer would charge me for that, and if he would be willing to. He's been a little bit busy, to busier, you know, taking on bigger projects and stuff. So, but I would do that. I would do that for sure. Dark Age Rush. We so yeah, we would have. Um, okay, let's check here. Yeah, I don't know how we would do that. I have to think about it. I do plan on, okay, it's House Cat of War versus Subutai. All right, so let's cat post this, turn in finals. Subutai gonna get his first win of the season, find out today. He's coming for it. All right, uh, Subutai. And uh, then we have, I believe, House Cat. Let's get him in there, cool. So we got our lobby and the grand finals map, I believe is, is it Itza? I don't think it's, it's a, no, it's Imperial Road. Imperial Road's a really good map. It's a very, very solid one. We like it a lot. All right, there we are. Perfect. Uh, faction play rate wouldn't be hard. You would basically, um, so each player would register as the faction in the FFA. Like when they sign up for it, there would be like a prompt that would say what they're played. And then we, we could get overall faction win rates too. It, it would be pretty possible. It'd be pretty possible. I don't know, maybe we will. Maybe we will indeed. All right, guys, Skaven versus Warriors of Chaos. Um, this matchup should be pretty even, actually. Uh, I, I think either side can win it. I, I personally would rather be on Chaos. I, I have con pretty consistently done well against Skaven with Chaos in this matchup, but I, I kind of stopped playing Chaos when they got the Mutalith Beast. And the Zangors and stuff, well, and Zangors aren't huge, as much of a problem, but yeah, House God of War is coming for blood. He is. But so is old Subutai. He's ready. The sweaty duel. Chaos and Skaven making it to the finals, which makes sense. They're both pretty good factions. Um, what's a Skaven win rate look like right now? 50%. Yeah, that's with power grab. If you take away power grab, Skaven would probably go down like 5%, I would say. 
Um, Warriors of Chaos, on the other hand, I don't know why they have a 45% win rate. That doesn't seem right to me. I guess they get killed by a lot of the uh, meta fac factions in like traditional tournaments and things like that. <laughs> hey, Dandy Dragon, how you doing? Hope you're excited for the Dune tournament, man. It's going to be good. So there is a, a streaming software for OBS. OBS is the broadcasting software. If any of you ever are interested in, you know, like how to stream and stuff, basically that's what you use. You use OBS. Um, it's free and um, it broadcasts to your YouTube feed. But there's a software plugin you can use for that, which you send a code to the uh, other pers other screens you want to capture. Um, and it uses this website. So I could basically be in a four player FFA game of Dune and switching between the perspectives of all four players which would be pretty cool. It wouldn't be like the highest quality feed. It'd be like 1080 instead of, you know, the, the higher one. But um, I think that could be really cool. The rats. Someone ping me when the blue scribes are back. Dead stream until then. I know, I, I agree with that. Yeah, blue scribes are pretty rad. Go rats. Well, the rats have a good chance here too, honestly. This could go either way. Skaven monster match is probably better in land battle, even though the most optimal way to probably play Skaven in land battle is like weapon schemes and artillery and defending that. Skaven have always kind of played that way. Like the monster mash Skaven is problematic because their leadership is really bad. So they, they route and just get chased off even when they're pretty healthy. Like if you look at the leadership on mutant, like the uh, like brood horrors and things like that, it's pretty bleak. It's pretty bleak. Yeah, so that's what we'll probably do for the Dune tournament finals. I'll stream my first round game and then we'll we'll do that after. Man, this stream has been lightning quick. To, we, we, we're done in like two and a half hours, man. Yeah, that's wild. Well, this stuff, would you ever do a uh, video so we can see the action players are making each game? Oh, we could. But the thing is, I mean, we could look at their armies now. These guys are literally clan mates. I don't think there would be any issue, but we could see like as it's being made, yeah? If that's what you're talking about. More Warpstone, yes, yes. Yeah, definitely going to be some Warpstone on the table here. I suspect Rat Ogres, Clan Rats... Avalanche Mortars, maybe a Gisele. Um, They're going to need something to kill Aeacold or at least deal with him somehow. Because you probably just go... Yeah, I, what I would do, I'd probably go Aeacold and Sigvald on the middle point. Just have fun getting that objective from those guys as Skaven. And then a Burning Headcaster and just roasting Clan Rats all day. And then you just, you know, do your thing from there. Also, some Aspiring Champions are really... You know, the Severed Claw parked with them would be brutal. Because that's going to be... What, 11 capture weight that like Skaven basically cannot kill? Yeah. This is the Grand Finals, yeah. This is the Grand Finals. Yeah, we have a couple um, pretty big clans in Total War War Warhammer. We have um, RTK, which is, they're very, they're very, they win most big events um, in domination mode. And as far as land battle goes, there's a couple different ones. We have um, ODM is pretty big in land battle still. They, ODM has been good for a long time, but they don't really play Dom. Anticity and Xyphos were the last ODM players that actively played Dom pretty heavily, but they both have basically quit playing multiplayer. Um, and uh, yeah, I know BBB, I think is a, I think it's a Spanish clan. I think they do land battle. There's XMT. I think they mostly do land battle or you don't really see them in tournaments too much anymore. Like Falcon was an XMT, Flying Taco was. Um, so yeah, there's there's a handful. There's a handful for sure. Yeah, a lot of players use debug camera and play from outer space. I don't. I'm probably one of the few tournament players who, who plays with the regular camera. Uh, hey, Bob, thank you, man. The reason why I don't like to play with the debug camera, it's like it, it defeats the whole purpose. The cool thing about Total War is like how the models look and the engagements look. Like I playing from outer space is like playing with like, yeah, I don't know. Like when I used to watch Anticity playing these other guys, I'd be like, man, how is this fun for you? I know it gives you an advantage, but I, I, I like to see the models fighting and the monsters fighting and stuff. I just like, I can't do it. Can't have, I can't do it. Yeah, Nurgle can be good too. Nurgle's got some weird ones. Well, Pone's not, Pone, you're not in a, in a clan. Uh, Felcon, I don't think he plays Total War anymore at all. Maybe casually on the side he'll play. Any ideas for other God-specific aspiring champions? Yeah, Nurgle could get some, like some, like, just take, like, kind of take inspiration from, like, the Putrid Blight Kings from Age of Sigmar. I think those were an end time unit, though, weren't they? The Putrid Blight Kings? You could probably add those in. Yeah. Good times indeed. Ghouls and Serkia are XMT. Okay, so there are, there's a couple of XMT guys around still. Hey, look at that. We nailed it. We nailed the Skaven build. It's literally the exact same as the last one we saw. But 
This chaos build is, uh, this is actually what Housecat did to me earlier and just smashed my chaos dwarves using the two Nurgle characters with the hero to heal them. It's really gross. It's like super hard to get rid of them. And it looks super badass too. So let's, uh, let's give some style points for that for sure. Pwn plays without debug camera too, yeah. And also like, I, it's not fun to watch people play with debug camera. Like if I did that, I don't think you guys would enjoy watching the replays and the, the battles as much. It's just like, it's just... Yeah, I almost wish EA just didn't even have debug camera. It seems like unfair that some players play with it. I know everybody has access to it, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's such an advantage to play from outer space. All right, guys, taking a look here at the Nurgle Warriors of Chaos Army, which I love it. It's like a Warriors of Chaos Warband with the mark of Nurgle. We got basic Chaos Warriors, which are great. They'll crush, they could probably take three or four clan rats in a row. But the problem is Rat Ogres can give them the dirty. Marauders, and we do have the Chaos Warriors of Nurgle with the uh, Fleshy and Rancid. Really good. This is a brutal sniping combo. You use Rancid and you just go in for the kill with your three characters and it is gross. Very gross indeed. A couple armored Chaos Trolls in the back and also some Chaos Spawn. A wild Chaos Spawn pick. Haven't seen one of these guys used. They had a time in the meta in the beginning of Warhammer 3 when Immortal Empires first got launched. But yeah, they're cool. I mean, they're good at, against Rat Ogres and good against Clan Rats. So that's not terrible. Not terrible at all. Now on the other side, we have the lovely Skaven. Skaven are mass clan rats with a couple weapons teams. So basically just using the two best weapons teams, the Natty Bubos, as well as the Avalanche Mortars, and just defending them. And uh, that's really kind of the anchor upon which the Skaven are going to be standing here. Yes, yes. Good times indeed. Who do you guys think is going to win in chat? Let me know if you're rooting for the old uh, rats or if you want the hordes of... Uh, Nurgle's chosen to win. It's not actually Nurgle, it's Warriors of Chaos. This is this is actually kind of similar to the paint scheme of my tabletop army. Um, although the green, yeah, it's a little bit more green. I, uh, I'm currently working on painting a Nurgle Warband in tabletop. It's awesome. It's uh, the, the Chaos models from Age of Sigmar, which will obviously be used in Warhammer Fantasies come back, are really good. Like, really, really good. They look very much like the Total War ones. All right, so the Hordes of Chaos going to be advancing up, and he's going to be taking advantage of the tree line here. So basically, you grab these two big, throbbing, exalted heroes and you push up through the trees like this and you just get all aggressive on the Skaven army. And uh, yeah, it can be nasty because they're incredibly hard to peel. So what's going to happen is they can dive on top of the weapons teams and like you're not going to be able to get them off super easily. Rat Ogres would probably be your best bet. For sure. Yeah, Bubos are really good. Natty Bubos have been a staple ever since they came out. They're super, super good. In the back, Chaos just kind of chilling out. Objectives, uh-oh, uh, uh -oh, a little bit of lag there for a second. Looks like we're back in business, so we are all good. And uh, yeah, Chaos will push up as soon as they they get the, in position to flank. Once these Chaos Warriors and these, or excuse me, these Exalted Heroes get around on the side, they're then going to be pushing up with the rest of the army. You guys like that? I know. I, it had been a while since we'd done one, so yeah, you guys you guys love it. What are the columns going to be for both players? House Cat of War... You know, it'd be my favorite would be a hell cannon, just like a hell cannon, like in the back corner here, just like nuking rats like all day. I mean, that would probably pay for itself, to be honest, like clearing out clan rats. Um, the Nurgle Sorcerer character, very good at gooning. I mean, it does have the old uh, rancid visitations. Now, what is he going to be using that? Is he going to just kill the chieftain? Oh, my God. He might go for a chieftain kill, which would get rid of the power grab. All right. Go outer space view. I don't have it. I don't have uh, the debug camera installed or set up, so I, I actually cannot even do that. Yeah. So Giselle shots from downtown, shooting into the Exalted Heroes of Nurgle. Pretty cost-effective for Skaven. You know, able to punch through their armor with those laser beams. I have a feeling he wants to go after the Chieftain. I, the way he's moving is awfully suspicious. Obviously, there is healing on this Nurgle Sorcerer as well, so he's going to be able to Bubos heal up the boys. Chaos has not started pushing yet, um, sitting back with the main army, waiting for something. Is it going to be a Mutalith Beast? That wouldn't be a bad idea either. You just move the Mutalith Beast in and you can heal it with the Fleshy Abundance. Oh, that's a nasty combo. And then, of course, you can, uh, you know, pile into the backfield and, like, what are they going to stop it with? I guess they could call in Rattling Gunners. Subutai should probably have Rattling Gunners in reserve. He's currently sitting on 2,300. Like, Chaos is not calling in anything at all. Like, nothing at all. Weird. He's, he's disrupting capture weight and he's going after the Chieftain. So he's going to rancid kill the Chieftain, or attempt to at least. Wow, look at that tech against Skaven. The dreaded Nurgle sniping. I mean, Nurgle, you know, has got some witchcraft for sure. So Subutai immediately realizes what's happening and is going to be running. That Chieftain is hanging in there. Really good response from Subutai, getting his flensing ruin. Oh my god, and the Natty Bubos with the penetrating shot, shooting all three of those guys with the AoE witchcraft. All right, that was very smooth. So the Chieftain is brought down low. There's going to be another one being used on him eventually, but I would imagine Subutai will 
probably hide that chieftain on the back of the map to make sure that doesn't happen. Now the Nurgle army is going to be pulling back, but overall I would say that entire engagement went a little bit better for Subutai. So now Chaos is going in. Uh, we got 2,300 supplies for Chaos. They haven't called in any reinforcements yet. I have no idea what it's going to be. Probably turning around and attacking these Rat Ogres here would be a good idea since they've overextended. Manticore is being called in on one side. And on the other side, are we going to get a Manticore also? No, just a single Manticore call in and Doom Knights. Okay, Doom Knights are pretty good against Skaven. They're very tough to stop. Uh, and they can definitely bully a lot of the weapons teams depending on the circumstances. So they're going to move in. Chieftain is running to the back of the map to hide in the corner, which is really funny. So, I mean, uh, that Rancid, probably not worth it at the end of the day. Mance Core and Doom Knights called in. Avalanche Mortar is going to be unleashing on the Marauders, and uh, they take it like champs for the Dark Gods. And the Old Skaven preparing with their Rat Ogres and their weapons team. So the Natty Bubo Sharpshooters unleashing on the Knights of Immolation, which are going to be trying to penetrate into the backfield, potentially threatening a chase off on that Chieftain. In the forest, Marauders and Chaos Warriors and Chaos Spawn going to be pushing up from every direction. So far, Subutai massively ahead on value, cackling all the way to the bank as the Doom Knights seem to be in good shape. And Doom Knights now going to be parking over the Avalanche Mortars, or are they going to be going after the Chieftain is the question. I cannot quite tell. Did the Chieftain get unsummoned, or is he hiding up here? Okay, Doom Knights do their bombardment on Avalanche Mortars, but it really doesn't do much damage, and he does get the pick on the Natty Bubos. But the Nurgle Champions are now going to move in and go after the other unit here, the Avalanche Mortars. So that was a really, really clinical strike there by Housecat. He found an opening, he poked and he prodded, and he got it. So Natty Bubo Sharpshooters offline, and now the Nurgle Ch Chadpians, the uh, Champions, yes. They move in, and they're just going to be cleaving these heroes. Yeah, they're going to give the dirty to these heroes, uh, or to these Mortars. Unless the Ogres are able to surround them and keep them there, we'll have to see. But now they're a little bit surrounded by the Ogres. Natty Bubo is going to be pulling back. And up here, we do see another Flensing Rune going to be going down from Old Subutai, which won't do bad damage. It's only going to be hitting the Lord and maybe the Chaos Warriors if they move into that. We'll have to see if they do. As far as the objectives go, Skaven and Old in the middle. Chaos not even playing the back objective, calling in Hounds. Warriors need to be given more orders. And the Nurgle Champions are surrounded by these uh, Arawar Rat Ogres, which is really, really cost-effective. The Arawar Ogres are awesome because they're immune to psychology. So... They're not going to get terror routed by like a Manscore being called in. And Subutai is doing a very good job defending his uh, his Avalanche Mortars. The Natty, or the Gisales, of course, were forced back. And here the Chieftain got slapped with another Rancid Visitations and he survives! Oh, that's so unfortunate for Nurgle, or for Chaos, who's playing as Nurgle. That's really, really rough. And Subutai is going to continue getting this value lead if these Avalanche Mortars are allowed to keep prospering and thriving here in this environment. Chaos moving up on the point with Warhounds. Chaos spawn at nibbling through the Clan Rats. And the Chieftain cackling back there has got to feel really, really bad. Now, Collins in the back. We do see Forsaken coming. And the Forsaken going to be hunting down the Poison Wing Globideers. They're certainly not bad if they can get them in uh, melee combat. They're only Poison Winds, so they're only 650 gold. The Avalanche Mortars have been able to shoot all day, which is brutal. And they're just eviscerating so many Chaos Troopers. But, oh, the Nurgle characters, they want that Chieftain so bad. They're trying to break the Skaven leadership. Look at him back there, sitting with eight leadership. The Nurgle champions are just pushing, but they're going to be taking a lot of attrition damage as they keep moving. And these are armor-piercing wolf rats too. So the armor-piercing wolf rats will be able to nibble through their armor ever so slowly. Now, on the middle, we do see the rats starting to fold up. The objective could actually go to the forces of chaos, depending on how the reinforcements from the Skaven go. Here we do see the spawn, as well as the Knights of Immolation still duking it out, battling these rat ogres here. And rat ogres will trade well into at least the Knights of Immolation. And it looks like the Chieftain was routed off the battlefield. So now the Skaven... Oh, no, they still have Power Grab. He's still alive. Where is he? Oh, here's the Chieftain. Oh, my God. He's running for the edge of the map, guys. If he loses that, the Skaven army is going to take minus eight leadership, which would be pretty nasty for sure. So here he comes. He's hustling towards the edge of the battlefield on the top side. We do, of course, see the Flensing Rune going down. Flensing Rune going to be tagging the Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Nurgle once again. So Subutai has been pretty on point with keeping that Lord down. He's really going to need to drop some sort of a heal on himself, like a fleshy abundance. He does have the Crown of Everlasting Conquest, which is pretty good. It gives him perpetual healing in combat. But man, how is he dying so fast? Oh, the Warlock Engineer is hitting him with his Pimp Cane there. Okay. Oh, God, that feels so bad for the Warriors of Chaos. The fact that the little Chieftain rallies on the edge of the battlefield and the two super expensive Nurgle characters that were sent to kill him do not make it. Oh, wow. Good defense by Subutai there. Avalanche Mortar is still raining some hot, sweaty fire in the middle, but Chaos hasn't heard any bell yet. No bell whatsoever. Doom Knight's going to be screaming across Hounds and Forsaken all over the battlefield. And honestly, they have a double cap on the Rats. And the Rats could still lose this game despite having some nice plays here. The Chieftain on the edge of the map is cackling, and the Nurgle Lord is going to be running also. So he's at 20 leadership. Will he rally? Subutai chasing with Wolf Rats is a great play. Really, really good awareness here to make sure to get the hunt on this bad boy. So the Chaos Sorcerer Lord of Nurgle 
is very, very close. He's going for it. And is he going to come back? Does not look like it. And the Chieftain is going to be cackling in the corner. I think he did get a little bit too much of a hard on on killing that uh, that Skaven, you know, here character squad. I think that might cost him. We'll have to see. So Forsaken moving up. The value is still within a thousand though, and Nurgle did have plenty of healing. Manticore. Uh oh, there's still one last hope. The Manticore of Doom could come across and chase that Chieftain off, which honestly, at this point, you should probably just do. You've committed so much. So the Manticore needs to gather up and go there. I don't think he sees it. Oh, that's rough. He doesn't see the little Chieftain hiding behind the rock, which is pretty hilarious. So. The bravest of chieftains, yes, yes, hanging out there in the backfield. So Chaos does have Chaos Warriors up on the point. Forsaken are moving. In the backfield, we get Armored Chaos Trolls heading out Forsaken and Forsaken. Forsaken are a really good second wave unit. You don't want them to be your first wave unit because of how squishy they are, but calling them in out of reserves, they're fast, they hit super hard, and when the army is more, I mean, kind of the battle's more chaotic, I find that Forsaken really shine. And in this case, they're going to just butcher these Poison Wing Globes. And uh, yeah, it is a double cap here for the Warriors of Chaos. Granted, they could get pushed off this. Forsaken have made it up. Avalanche Mortars in the backfield still laughing it up all the way to the bank. The lone Chaos Spawn with 112 HP, dude. He's going for it. Let's let's follow this man's journey, shall we? Here he comes. And uh, yeah, he's he is the last of his people. Mighty Cathay statue in the background. Is anybody going to stop this man? Oh, he's going for it, baby. He's going for it. Qu Here comes Quasimodo. All right, he gets in and does push back the weapon team. That's actually really big. That's going to be buying Chaos quite a bit of time. Oh, but the Rat Ninja on the back objective. Is Housecat going to see this? I don't know if he is. If this objective gets ninjaed by Skaven Slaves and Clan Rats, I would say that uh, Subutai has a good chance to win the game. If Housecat defends this, I would say that it's still going to be a very tight game. But if Subutai gets this, I would say he's going to be favored to win it because he is kind of creeping up a little bit in terms of the value. But I don't know. Those Forsaken are still butchering a lot. And um, the spawn, though, he didn't hear no bell. He didn't. And he still was able to chase back those Avalanche Mortars, which are now obstructed. But... They got to use all their ammo. So they're at 1,900 value right now, which is brutal. All right, Marauders coming out. They're going to be sprinting to the objective. So House Cat of War does notice. Is he going to get there in time? Two more Haggard Clan Rats arrive. And that could flip. I mean, Marauders are relatively quick, but that is an absolute disaster losing that objective because this is a close game and little plays like that can make all the difference. So Chieftain still hiding behind the pillar here, sitting at barely any leadership. Um, is he going to make it? Oh my God. The Marauders are hustling. I mean, the Skaven here, how much capture weight do they even have? It's probably not even five. Oh, God, look how close it is. He needs this. He really, really needs this. They're going to make it, and the Marauder hits the edge, and oh, he does not get it. No, I mean, Subutai gets it. The, the, the Chaos didn't get the objective back. So now the Marauders are up on the point. They're going to be able to bully them off eventually, but that is a disaster. That is a huge, huge disaster right there that now Skaven, like, not only did that get the back objective, but it took pressure off the front lines. Instead of sending reinforcements to dive back here, he had to send units to go try and get this home objective back, which is really rough. In the middle, waves and waves of rats coming in, so Skaven Slaves and Clan Rats. And with that, House Cat of War, a veteran of the game, knows that it is over. And he is going to call. GG, well played. Subutai getting his first tournament win of the season. Congratulations. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that one. It was fun. It was fast. It was furious. A good, quick tourney. So, what do we got? Really, House Cat of War went balls deep trying to shut down the character, and he failed. And that was basically it. That's like, he lost all three of his characters trying to kill the Chieftain, and he didn't accomplish his goal. Even still, he put up a good fight, but, you know, when you invest three, 4,000 gold in trying to kill, like, an 800 gold character and you fail, you're going to pay the price. So, GG, well played. The rats have gotten it. Great game for today. Hopefully you enjoyed not only watching me suffer as the Chaos Dwarves, but also a good Skaven win. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the stream, do drop a like on the way out. It was uh, certainly a good time. Helps keep the old haggard Total War community alive. Congrats to Subutai. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be seeing you back on the other side very soon. Streams all throughout the week. Good times are coming. And that is going to be it for today. So GG well played. Congrats to Subutai as well as Housecat. And big shout out to Ghouls. To, to Ghoul Baby for the glorious Blue Scribe semifinal game. Let's not forget this. All right, guys. See you next time. Take care of yourselves and Sigmar bless.